Hey, yo, what's good? What's good? What's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the Roll podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked, and we have Jamie the Great with me. Yeah. I never thought we'd be recording an episode like this. Recently, this month, our co-host DJ Neva passed away on Sunday, November 5th at Spring Valley uh, Hospital. We recently had his funeral last week on Monday in New York, in Harlem, and that was November 20th. And he was buried next to his mother, Juanita, in the Bronx at uh, Woodlawn Cemetery. I'm here with Neva's close friends, with his close family. Here we have his older sister, Marion. We have his other sister, Seen. And we have his niece, Nicole, Seen's daughter. Yeah. We, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And next to me, we have one of Neva's closest friends. He's known him for over two decades, more than that, if anything. He's been a constant uh, co-host and guest here on the Road Podcast, uh, Eddie McDonald from Mac Agency. One of my close friends and best friends from New York, and it was very tight with Neva, straight from New York. We have DJ Sean Perry here. What's good, fam? So we're gathered here to, you know, celebrate the life and career of our friend, brother, uncle, you know, loved one, DJ Neva, Evan Boyd. So I want to actually talk to y'all because, we, you know, we've been gone for a couple of weeks. There's been announcements on all the social medias, uh, you know, that Neva has passed away. Mm -hmm. There's been, you know, po uh, Instagram posts about his funeral arrangements and a Las Vegas memorial that's coming up this week. Mm -hmm. uh, but we want to talk about what, what kind of happened. We want to update y'all on what happened in, in, in the past, I don't know, probably month and a half, two months that's been going on. This has been going on since October, if anything. And, and the reason why it seems sudden is that, you know, back in October, you know, there, there was a week that we were headed to L.A. Yes. Uh, and I believe it was it was mid October. It was like the week of October fifteenth to like the nineteenth. We were going to be in L.A. It was like a Monday to a Thursday. Thursday, the week before that, somehow you know I, I don't know what was going on in Vegas that week. Brian Michael Cox was in town. Yeah, Skills uh, from Virginia was in town. Yeah, um, DJ Mars, Usher's DJ. Yes, uh, was in town. So all of a sudden, we got these last minute bookings to to have these guests on. Yeah. And, and this is like prior to us going to L.A. where we had like maybe eight interviews lined up and yes. we jam packed eight interviews into like three to four days. Mm -hmm. So that's intense for us. It's a lot of research and, and never was the research guy. Yep. So, you know, that whenever we have a guest on, I always depend on never to do the research. Yeah. So this so this week that we had coming up with these three guests, they're like, hey, we're in town. They want to come on a podcast. Yeah. We can't say no to DJ Mars. We can't say no to Skills. Yeah, that's not We right. can't say no to Brian Michael Cox. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to try to make it all happen. Mm -hmm. So it was around this week that Neva wasn't feeling right. He yeah. was a little out of out of the weather. Mm -hmm. And for, from what he thought, it was the flu. I thought it was COVID. I think everything's COVID. But, you know, <laughs> that's just me. You know what I'm saying? But so he made it to the one in interview. Yeah. which was Mars, which was on a Wednesday. October 11th. And that episode aired, that's which is our last episode that, that, that we uploaded and posted. Mm -hmm. And that's the last episode that never recorded. Yeah. And then he's never done this in, in my life that I've known him. He called us and he said, I can't make it to the, I can't make it to the next interview. Which is October 12th. Which is October 12th. And that was name. with Skills. Yes. And... I'm in, you know, you know me, right? Yeah. I'm in work mode. When I'm in work mode, I'm in survival mode. I'm trying to, I'm like, the show got to go on. So, you know, I'm trying to keep things running. So I'm like, never, you, you know, you're never sick. So I believe you're fucking sick, right? Yeah. So get some rest and me and Jamie are going to hold it down. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I pulled Jamie aside. I'm telling him like, yo, we got we to gotta make this happen. We got skills. We got Brian Michael Cox. We can't fuck this up. So we had October 11th, we had Mars. October 12th, we had uh, Skills. And then October 13th, we had Brian Michael Cox. Right. And then October 15th, we were all leaving to L.A. Yeah, but during that time when we were recording that, Nev had flu symptoms, right? Yes. Um, but he was still sending us notes and research. He was still talking to us, too. And we, were, and, you know, we were still talking with him, but we were so crazy because me and, him, me and Jamie are DJing and we're doing interviews at the same time and we're trying to keep... 
this this ship going yeah. while Neves sick. Mm-hmm. As the weekend progresses, he gets worse, goes to the hospital. We're not sure what's going on. No. By that time, I tell him, you're not going to L.A. Stay here. There's no way you're going to L.A. And, you know, I'm still stuck in work mode. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the thing with Neva is that he's just never sick. He's just, no. to me, he's like invincible. Like, I've never had him call out or like, you know, Eddie, I don't know. You've known him for a long time. He's never called out sick. Very, the yeah, very rare, if at all. I, don't, I can't even, I can't even remember. And, yeah. and, you know, like for the life of me, I'm going to think about this for the rest of my life. I should have stopped and dropped everything and just checked on him for one second. Yeah. But I was just. Because I did tell you, I did tell you, should we push this this trip back and we should just wait till he gets better and just stay put? And you were like, no, let's just try to make it happen. He- let's just try to make it happen. Everything's in the works. Let's just go. So, you know, we're, and meanwhile, we're still talking to Neva and, you know. He's still texting us notes and stuff like that. And yes. we're just still texting us notes, but he's gradually getting worse and worse. And by the time we're in, in L.A. on Monday. We, we finish our recordings in L.A. on Monday, which is like October 16th. And then yes. and then Tuesday, we get through the day of Tuesday. Yes. And then we have a big interview with this one OG yeah. who I'm going to keep nameless. Um, and, you know, I was dependent on Neva to get me these notes. Yes. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And by the morning, I don't have the notes. And I, I called Neva Tuesday night, I think we called We did him. call him on the way home. And he didn't sound great. But he also said he just woke up. He said we woke him up, but he sounded a little groggy. But he said, you guys woke me up. I'll have, the, I'll have the notes by the morning for you guys. And then Wednesday morning, he didn't send the notes. And my instant reaction was like, oh, man, never let us down. Yes. He didn't get the notes done. Mm-hmm. And I was about to call him. And I was stressing out. We had these two big interviews coming up. And that's when Marion, his oldest sister, called me. And she was frantic. She called uh, an ambulance, and he was headed to the hospital in Las Vegas. We were in L.A. Yeah. And, at the, you know, she she did everything right at that moment. She called the ambulance and looked like he had a stroke. Right, Marion? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> a few days before he, um, leading up to all of that, he had pains he said he had pains in his back and he couldn't walk right Mm -hmm. and we had gone to um spring valley hospital i believe it was a sunday and everyone thought it was sciatica Mm -hmm. and he was um given um painkillers he wasn't getting any better and i kept saying we're gonna go again we're gonna go again and he was like no let's give the medicine some time to work right and then i was working from home because I didn't want to leave him alone in the house. Mm -hmm. And this was Wednesday morning, about six o'clock, I had gotten up and gone to see him in the room. And he um, was talking, we were talking, and then he said something that just didn't make any sense. And then I said, what? And he said it again. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. Right. So I said, I'm gonna call 911. He was like, no, don't, don't, I'm okay, I'm okay. But he just really wasn't, and I called, you know, nine one one, and f- to come and get him, because I felt at that time that it was a stroke. Right. Um, I was on the phone with the nine one one operator, and there were certain things they asked me to do with him: have him smile, can he raise his arms, you know, and say things. And we did all of that. And meanwhile, you know, um, the EMTs and the fire department came and took him to the hospital as I and so I'm following them in the car and I called scene I called you and I told you you know I don't know what's wrong but he we're on the way to the hospital right get to the hospital and then I was really frantic because he was okay he was up he just wouldn't wake up and that's what frightened me he would get up and then he was like I'm sleepy I want to go back to sleep and I wouldn't let him sleep but by the time I got to the emergency room, there were maybe so many, there were 10 people in the room, you know, trying to put the tubes in him and everything else. And I'm like, how did we get to this point? Right. You know, so then I was really upset. And that's when I think I had called you because he did give me 
your number and Eddie's number mm -hmm. um, to call, you know, if anything was wrong. And I knew I was there alone and right. I was, you know, Rich, Rich, you saw me when you got there, you right. know. So, um, so that was pretty much it. I just had to sit there. I sat there right. all morning, you know, an afternoon and then you came yeah. and then seeing um, you were making your arrangements to get to Vegas, you know, as quickly as possible. And, and so when you called me, it was like I came to a shock because when you called me, I thought I got scared for a second because mm -hmm. I've, you know, yeah, I just thought something. I thought he passed away. Yeah. Yeah. And and then I started freaking out. Yeah. And then you said, well, no, he's in, in the hospital. So I yeah. said, OK, so he's he's stable right now. So Jamie and I spoke. We still had like equipment set up in yeah. L.A. at like the DJ city offices where we're conducting interviews. I said I was going to fly back. He had to drive back and bring the equipment. So I flew back immediately. And I think I saw you that afternoon. Yeah. And. Yeah, I got you on a plane like in the next hour after finding out you got a plane like one o'clock. We found out like 1130. Yeah. And you were back by two o'clock. Yeah, I was by, back by two. By that time, he was intubated. He was sedated. Um and basically technically on life support because they were like keeping it was like well the, it was a medically induced yeah. coma because they didn't right. want um they didn't know what was wrong they mm -hmm. didn't know what was going on and they didn't want you know anything else to happen right so that's why they um put him to sleep yeah and then so you know throughout the next two to three weeks he was basically you know we me jamie eddie marion Nicole, seeing you guys there that night. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, you got in and, I mean, throughout the next, you know, three weeks, mm -hmm. he was in the hospital. And we were there every day. Every day, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, don't, I think that's the thing that people don't understand. And that, I think that was the hardest thing is that we kept episodes going. Yeah, for three weeks. We didn't know. And I think that was the hardest thing about being in the hospital every day. Um. And just hearing news of hope and then hearing news that just made us feel defeated. It was just every hour, every two, three hours, every day. One day the neurologist is saying, you know, mm -hmm. he's going to be brain dead. And then all of a sudden the, the main doctor saying, no, there's hope. He's, he's fine. His kidneys are doing better. Mm -hmm. You know, there's all these things. There's all these different the infection doctor coming in saying this is, you know. This is not looking good. And then want another doctor coming in. So it was this big roller coaster of emotions. And it was maybe one of the most draining things I've ever been through in my life to mm -hmm. see my best friend uh, in this state in this state and being completely helpless. Yes. And I mean, yeah. we're just there and with all this. And yeah. And, you know, seeing Ooh. Nicole, you guys are speaking to him playing gospel his favorite gospel That's songs yes That's right. <laughs> even I'm, god yeah. for a miracle I yeah. Would yeah anyhow and the thing is we couldn't tell anybody we no. couldn't announce anything because we didn't know what was going on we kept episodes going and through all this mean you kept working you like kept DJing. working we were djing so like we you know i'm going out every weekend i'm djing and i'm trying to do my job and everyone's asking and they're talking you know how's never everything i'm like yo he's cool he's cool we're just trying to keep things, you know, um, I don't know, just private. Yeah, we private. don't know what's, what's going on. We and had hope. Yeah. We thought yeah. things was going to turn yeah. around. Yeah. Thought he was coming home. Yeah. It's so chaotic for us to say that he's in the hospital. Yeah. Because yeah. then everyone just contacts us all at once. Mm -hmm. And now the focus becomes on us literally becoming like re reporters to everybody and updating everybody on what's going on, how he is. Because... You know, we had to tell close friends. You guys had to tell the extended family what was going on, mm -hmm. and that was that was maybe even maybe the more, more draining, draining thing. Very draining. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Was that everyone's like, "What's going on?" Mm -hmm. What's every and, day? Yeah. And then every literally every two three hours, we're reporting. Uh, so this is going on, and then it changes in four hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes. well, no. Now it's a little better. Yeah. yeah. Marion will be sending us text right. messages, yeah. updates, and everything. And but during this time, I mean, this was an awful time, you know what I mean? But I really got to know 
scene and Marion and Nicole, I've, I've known you, you know, I've, you've come to Vegas often. I've seen you in New York, you know, you always been hanging out with never at his gigs and, 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 and everything. But I really got to get to know his two sisters. Mm -hmm. I thought that was just a beautiful thing too, because as I got to know both of you more, I saw, you know, never in each of you because there are all these characteristics. Mm -hmm. There's these similar interests <laughs> that both of you guys had that he that he 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 um you know adopted from you guys and just being around you and and I thought it was some of the most beautiful things and I I was in the room with Marion one one day I think it was maybe the the first or second day and, you know and she told me like he's the baby and I said wow like I've never seen <laughs> Neva as the baby <laughs> I have I but you know like every you them. know everyone's a baby to somebody yeah. right yeah that's the truth yeah and uh. I just thought, you know, the pain that I was having was nowhere near compared. I don't, you know, I, I don't know how, if we can co compare pain or loss, but you know, I, when you guys said that to me, I, it really, it really, um, it really actually empowered me to stay stronger. Mm -hmm. So I had to keep, I had to hold it down for, for never. And his sisters are here. So I had to look after. I felt like I had to look out for y'all at the mm -hmm, same time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, honestly, through this whole thing, I feel like y'all are my sisters. Like, I feel completely close to you. I'm at service mm -hmm. to y'all. You know what I'm saying? So sure. I'm just letting y'all know, like, this was an awful thing. This was a, a, a tragic loss for all of us. Yeah. But in, in all of this, I think one of the most beautiful things is I got to know his family more. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. feel connected to y'all more than ever. You know, I, I think I speak for all of us, right, Eddie and, yep. and Jamie. Absolutely. But I, you know, w when I was with y'all, you know, Mary and I, I think there was a, we were talking for like two, three hours, and yeah. you were here, and, and you were telling me both of you guys used to go into park jams in the Bronx, yeah, right, and and um, you used to, and uh, you were telling me the parents, you know, y'all your parents used to force y'all to bring him out and bring him out to the park. <laughs> yeah, wherever wherever I went, he had to go, you know. Yeah. 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 So how, wait, how old was he exactly? Like around this time? Oh my gosh, she he was a little guy he was maybe six or seven six or seven that young eight yeah going to the park jams yeah, yeah. yeah. I, i'm like what nine years older than him yeah and i'm uh, so 11 I was years a teenager so yeah. yeah he might have been like six, six yeah years old. i was i was 15 yeah when he was born 15. i was 11 so yeah. maybe i was 15 or six he may have been six or seven years old because wherever we went he had to go and i wasn't missing um the music because that was the beginning of you know hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Grandmaster Flash lived down the street. They were always in the park playing. It's crazy. And you know, in St. Mary's Park, we would just tell them if you hear gunshots, run. hit the ground. No, <laughs> not run. Hit the ground. <laughs> you know, you and, would tell um, a six year old never if you hear gunshots, <laughs> hit the ground. Just hit the ground and lay down. Lord that's Jesus. it. And that's would y'all would y'all practice at home like? <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> no, no, we didn't. We didn't have to practice at home. And, you know, luckily he never heard a gunshot while we were there. But, you know, there were big crowds and everything else. And he was little. So it was just, you know, holding his hand and yeah. um, keeping him close. So I'm curious. I'm curious. How would y'all hear about the park jams in the Bronx at this time? It was just a word of mouth. Word of mouth. It was. Just yeah. a word of mouth. But, but like you never, it wasn't like every Friday or every Saturday. Yeah. It just, it every, there was. every Friday and Saturday, there was a jam I'm going on in either, the park. Somewhere, even, either in Patterson Projects, 18 mm. Park. St. You know, Mary's Park. Yeah. Our or projects. More, more, more houses. More houses. Yeah. And what time was this around? Like, what's the time of this? It was starting in the afternoon. Yeah. Three, four o'clock. And so you guys are getting ready. Y'all get looking pretty and getting getting your outfits together. Nah, no? We didn't live like that no? back in the day. We wasn't all about that. that. <laughs> we wasn't, you know, like, you know, the people are now. We just, was just ourselves, you yeah. know. Yeah. We just, it wasn't about being pretty or cute or fly or nothing like that. You just go as you was and yeah. hang out, you know. And then y'all did, what was, what was like, seeing, I, Mary, I know you love the music. 
I do. And that's one of the connections that I know you and, yeah. and, and never have. Yeah. yeah. Seeing what was your attraction to go to Park Jams? I like the music. The music, too. too. The music. Oh, sure. The I was into the music. Yeah, I yeah. danced and I even had my own nickname. Starsky called me Silver Streak. And <laughs> yeah. I wore yeah. a lot of silver bangles. <laughs> she did. And yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Love, I mean, yeah. love, love Bug Starsky. Starsky. Love yeah. Bug Starsky. Yeah. So you, y'all in Love Bug Starsky with Ty? Yeah. 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 Red yeah. Alert, too. Red Alert. Red, Red Alert. Alert. Yeah. Yes. When he was Fred. Yeah, Fred. Fred. When he was Fred. Fred Crew. When he was Fred. Yeah, before Fred. he yeah. was Fred Alert. Yeah, y'all yeah. must yeah. have been the cuties on the block then. Right. Yeah, no. you know what? No, we really weren't. <laughs> I know you guys were the cuties on the block because the DJs had gave y'all nicknames. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all were cool. No, we, no. Y'all so calling first? You know what? Y'all well, calling well, first names? Well, well, I guess we were cute, yeah, yeah. but we didn't have to work hard at it. Like people have to work hard at being cute. Now you know, it's just you know, that's just effortless. Effortless. Yeah. Effortless. Yeah. 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 I think Red Alert was friends with Sydney, who was, you know, seeing Nadine at the time. So it was, by the way, I don't even know how, where Starsky came from or how we met him, but we all just hung out, hung DJ, out. AJ. We used to have like a crew. Yeah. Back in the day, you know, everybody knew everybody mm. in the projects, right, you right. know. And certain people just hung out with certain people. So my mom's was like, was she like a community? I don't know. I, we used to call her the Mayor of Morehouses. You know, right. she was a tenant yeah. control supervisor. Right yeah. So she had these community rooms. So it was like a crew of us that actually hung out in these rooms, mm. yeah. you know. And like I said, it wasn't about being cute. We were just a crew that just hung out yeah. together. Yep, yeah. yeah, but your mother was like a staple in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. we called her the Mayor Morehouse. Yeah, yeah. you know. Mayor Mo- yeah, I, I remember never telling me like when she, when she passed. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. everyone on the block. I think I, you yeah. know. I, I forgot when uh, when me and mom yeah. came out the building. When when, and she, when passed. she passed away, and mm. we came out the, the building, building. Yeah, everybody was outside. It was like a. a uh, it was May. It was May. It was, it was May. It was yeah. hot, Before it Memorial was, Day, yeah. It was May, and everybody was just like, oh, oh. Miss Boy, you know, God bless you. You know, because mm. it was COVID time. So during her funeral, it wasn't a lot of people there. Right. You know, we only had, like, you were only allowed a certain amount of people. But I felt that was her funeral. I felt her presence walking next to me saying, which she was, Look at me. You know, because everybody was like standing up and like, oh, Miss Boy, thank you. We love you. Right. You know, because she, um, at that time, I guess after the park with the summer and the springtime, you know, you can't hang out in the park. She would allow these guys to have parties in the center. Mm. You know, so Evans had to get dragged you know, yeah. into the center because my father was a merchant seaman, so he wasn't there to babysit, so she would have to, you know, bring him along. And, you know, we was at the party, so, you know, yeah. he'd be sleeping, you know, and, you know, still. So the it's, music, been a, so it's been a thing since he was a kid. Yeah, yeah, the music was constantly in his ears, you know. That's why he but, always sleeps best in the club. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he was so used to that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it was, it was, it was a different time, you know, and. Yeah. Yeah. He was a part of that. So you he, know? you would drag him out, and would he get excited to go to the park? Yet? He could care less. He exactly, didn't he didn't care. He was a kid. He didn't care. And then, and then y'all would just, y'all would like, you guys want to dance? Y'all want to mingle? I right? make sure so. he sit on the bench. I don't know all about. I just make sure, just sit here <laughs> yeah. and stay here. So the DJs were always set up by the bench because they could put their crates and everything. Right. So. Put him on the other end. You just stay here. Not that they was watching him. They probably could care less. But he would stay there, him and his little friends. They'd be sitting there like, you know, <laughs> twiddling, diddling, you know. Yeah. We just had to have him, you know. We couldn't leave the house without him, you know. Mm-hmm. He had to go outside, too, you know. we go outside, he went outside, yeah. so. And then with me, time. it was, you know, we would just stand and listen to the music and everything else. Um, I, think, I think as he got older, when he was in... Um, Junior high school. Junior high school. They had the little dance group. Catholic. Catholic school. school. And it was a dance group. So he had his moment being a break dancer. Yeah, him and his little four Him and his friends. I call him the four musketeers. And he had a fade. (laughs) You know? He had a fade like maybe a foot tall. Yeah. He had the high top. He had a high top. Yeah. 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 And, um, And that was just it. You know, music was just. His thing. His thing. Everybody's thing. You well, know, like, was he, I, I was just, I think it's amazing at like five, six years old to just for like, you know, a, I don't know, was it a, a few summers with just being next yeah. to the DJ booth yeah. all yeah. the time? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it like it's, 
it was he was kind of it's raised like to be or something. Because, right? yeah. He was yeah. raised you know, to be a DJ. Yeah, you yeah. know, because yeah. you know, after a while, those DJs after they became more popular, yeah. they weren't in the parks anymore. No, right. So it was that rare. Yeah, it was. Know? It was just that few, maybe a few, few years, you know, that they really was in the streets, and then they got popular. So then they was mm-hmm. going into the clubs, the ballrooms, you know, they had little. Um, the Renaissance. The Renaissance. Yeah, just the ballrooms yeah. and these little black doors, places where I don't know. It was just. <laughs> it was you know, it, wherever the they could be. Was, whenever they y'all, let them in, they. Stop were acting there. like you guys weren't. Yeah, exactly. like, y'all, y'all were there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, we were there. Yeah, I'm, I was there. She's acting like we would never go. Yeah. We would never go it was, <laughs> to these seedy black door places. Yeah, but y'all oh, was there. No, we were there. Yeah, but we remember, and this was when this was when the Bronx was burnt down. And remember on Fremont Street, I swear that. Freeman Street. Freeman Street. Yeah. The black, black door, door was a, yeah. Y'all might have a dilapidated, <laughs> burnt out building. That So that's why it was, it was a black burnt door. Is that what it was? I, no, I have no, no idea. The was door black, wasn't black. It was literally a black door. door. And okay. the spot was called the black, black door. door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no thought in and this. And they were too. making money. See, then 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 these guys started making money. You right. know, AJ and um Flash and they were making money, you know, mm. because now they're charging people to come into these parties, yeah. you know, to hear them play this music. You know, so Evans really wasn't a part of that, but he was a part of the beginning when they started out when in the, the and, street. And anyone who played in the park, because even after after, you know, they um, started becoming more and more popular, they still came back to the park and played. Once in a while. You know, AJ and Starsky still played in the center, you know, every now and then. Now and then, yeah. When, when did your conversations about music start between you and Neva? Because, you know, Neva's, like, encyclopedic knowledge of music yeah. and, like, chronological orders of like he knows the years of yeah everything. he's like that quest love kind of like, and like yeah. knows the liner notes knows the label knows the release date it's, all yeah. that shit yeah he was it, it was he like was, insane ooh. but I, when I talk to you I'm like oh he got that from he got some of that from you because I always and I still do read the well back then it was albums then, cas- then cassettes and then right. CDs I would always read the back of the album to see you know who was on the album who did background music and things of that nature by then um i was in high school and um i went to music and art so some of my friends were professional musicians like marcus miller omar hakeem mm. and like omar wrote songs and played songs for george benson mm-hmm. so whenever any of my friends did any music i would always buy the album to support them and just read the liner notes to see who was on it and then wow. it was just a thing to read the liner notes to see who was which musicians were playing you know percussion or the trumpet or whatever especially with chaka khan and you know th- those those artists and that was what I love the most and that I listen to, right. you know, the most Earth, Wind, and Fire and Chaka <laughs> Khan and things like that. So even to this day, you know, I still try to read the liner notes, even though everything is digital, digital now. Digital. Right. But they still put the <clears throat> album cover or whatever just to read and see who's on it. So yeah. that's, you know, that's what I did. I still do it. And you're like obsessed with finding different versions of songs. Absolutely. And he would help me find things. So um, you would, so you would never would like, for example, like tell me, I remember you were telling me like, oh, there's this one, there's like four versions of this one song. Right. And one's like Brazilian and another, right. yeah, it would, like. Explain but for that example, to me. Um, obscure Isaac Hayes. Whenever he did an album, he always had a Ike's rap. Ike's rap one, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. So Ike's rap number seven um, was to the song "This Time I'll Be Sweeter." But <coughs> back in the day, in the late '80s, a lot of artists were on multiple labels at one time. So you may have had an album come out, but it may not have come out in cassette or it may not have come out in CD. Mm -hmm. And it was just the album. And I have every one of those Ike raps, you know, but I could never find the number seven. So this was something he helped me with. We would look everywhere for it. And then actually how we found it is when isaac hayes passed away somebody put his entire collection of music on youtube Mm. and he helped and he found it and helped me download it from youtube so that i can put it on my laptop and i did the same thing for him sometimes if he was looking for something you know 
that, you know, he couldn't find. And, you know, that's what we did, you know, help each other find really obscure music that I like music from movies. And sometimes you'll hear a song in a movie and you'll be like, where did that come from? You know, so we would try to find out where it came from. And we did most of the time. When did, when did, when did that start? At what age did you start having that connection with, with, with uh, music? Neva, with, yeah, with him and you guys nerding out and, you know. All For that. me, it was probably in high school because, you know. And so he was like still like, what, eight or nine? At yeah, he was eight or nine. And then two, I had this, remember I had the organ and I had an organ and uh, an electric organ and, and it came with three songs. And to this day, those three songs are still some of my like favorite songs, like um, This Guy's In Love With You, Moon River, and We've Only Just Begun. Mm -hmm. And it would just make my dad crazy because I would play that organ all, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all day long. And, and we would laugh. And there were certain things that would tick off my father. So you know, he was like, don't you know any other songs? And I'm like, somebody's got to buy me some more music. <laughs> so then that's what led me into music and reading music and writing music and then when he started everyone had their own music that we played over and over again for me it was mm -hmm. earth wind and fire all day all night um, he loved earth wind and fire yeah 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 he took you to see them i think like, yeah we went we like went to see them ago. yeah and um i think for him it was the the what was it the treacherous three with heartbeat mm -hmm. he yeah. he liked that song and it just drove my father crazy. But that was just something we, <laughs> that was just something we did, um, you know, as far as music, music was concerned, because I'm really obsessed with instrumentals and things of that nature. So, so w between, you know, his two sisters, Zine and Marion, I, I feel like the, you guys got two different sides of Neva or you got the same side? Because, you know, like with Zine, I remember you telling me a, a conversation of him telling you, like, I want to DJ. Right or something, oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. and then you were kind of telling, well, if you want a DJ, you gotta, you gave him like a game plan, get a job, a mm -hmm. real job. He so was what, working. Did, what, he was already working at Banana Republic in okay. the Gap, but the thing was, they would always go hang out when they got off. Mm -hmm. And um, so how yeah. do? But how did he come to you? Also, like, uh, where did did it come out of nowhere t to you, or so, did it sound? So like I didn't, you know? didn't want to get into that, but I will. Evans and his guys from Gap or Banana Republic would go and hang out in mm -hmm. the village. Yeah all the time, every weekend. But this one weekend, a few things would happen every time he was in the village. This was like the early 90s, mm -hmm. so a lot yeah. of things was going on down right. yeah. <clears throat> And Evan seemed to always be involved. Not that he was a part of it, just things would happen. Like one time somebody tried to take his coat and they cut him. Yeah, we've and heard that story. Yeah, yeah. Heard yeah. 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 And, and then, you know, it was another time, I don't know what happened, but this last time, it, it wasn't a good time for him. It wasn't a good thing for him. But he didn't do anything wrong. Him and one of his young friends from um, Catholic school and another one, three of them. <clears throat> was at a billboard club or whatever? Somebody got, I don't know, assaulted or there was something that something happened. Something happened got shot. They got a got shot. Somebody got shot, yeah. <clears throat> so some, anyway, some, what something happened? Something went down in Chinatown. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So what <laughs> happened? <laughs> So what happened, I don't know whether it was China. I don't know where. It wasn't Chinatown. Well, it was the village, and they picked everybody up. It was the village. Up. It was yeah. the village. It was in the village. That's not Chinatown. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> this one event, which led to Evans and his friends to be, um, I want to use a word. Detained. Thank you. Detained <laughs> <laughs> for the weekend. Yo, they was, they was in Central Booking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. We've CMC all right. been in Central <laughs> Booking. Yeah. It was in GV. Yeah. For the weekend. <laughs> the and yo, that's the worst time to be in Central Booking. Yeah. But let weekend. me tell you, that's right, because I know very well there is no court on Saturday. You got to wait till Til Sunday Monday. morning. Oh, I Sunday think you have to morning. wait till Monday. Right, no, Monday. Sunday. Okay. So. That's the worst. Um, and with my profession, I just felt that it was time for him. He was still young then, because I was pregnant with my son, mm -hmm. Daniel. Daniel is now 31. And um, so I said to him, you know, what is it that you want to do? Because, you know, hanging out, you know, you got to find, you got to do something, you know. <clears throat> 
And you know, the, the funny thing about it was, to me, even though Evans was into music and um, he was always quiet. I found him to be a, a quiet storm, mm -hmm. you know, and for him to come out to say to me, after I said to him, you know, well, you need to get a job, you know, so in my mind, it'll keep him busy if he get a real job, you know, not, let, you know, that little part-time, a real full-time job. And um, I did, I mentioned, yeah, you need to find you a girlfriend, you know, I figured, all right, you got a job, you got a girlfriend, he ain't gonna have time to want to hang out in the club so much. And, um, <clears throat> And that's when he told me, you know, he he had already told me he wanted to be the DJ. So I was like, and then you could DJ if you want to. I didn't really, when he said that, I was kind of shocked because it's like, oh, you want to be a DJ? Mm -hmm. You know, Is he, he never, it? yeah, he never, um, to me, I never saw in him wanting to be a DJ because he was quiet. I knew he loved the music. Right. I knew he loved to, you know, party and hang out. But the DJ? I was like, wow. Like I said, in my head, it was like, oh, yeah, everybody want to be a DJ or a basketball player now. <laughs> I didn't say that to him, though. Right. <clears throat> I didn't say it to him, but in my mind, I was like, a DJ? Wow. That blew my mind. And then, you know, I said, well, you know, if you're going to do that, at least you have the backup plan. You mm -hmm. know, I just, in my mind, I was like, wow. I, I'm still to this day to see everything, you know, that people were saying about him. And even years ago when I came out here and, and mm -hmm. I saw him play, y'all did that thing. I was very, I was like, wow, this guy is really, <laughs> I knew then, you know, I knew it. You know, I was like, wow, you know, but um, yeah, I gave him the plan. Yeah. And I'm happy that, that he followed through. He did follow through with the plan. Yeah, he, he got did. the job in housing. He yeah, got yeah. Renee the girlfriend. <laughs> and he got yeah. those. He asked my grandpa for those um, turntables and them big, at that time, they had those big, gigantic speakers. The funny thing about it, and I'm going to tell you all this story. Mm. The guy that he got in detained with, you know, they went to parochial school together. <laughs> well, um, his father when Evans first got his equipment, would take him to parties. He said Evans' first gig, and I don't know if Evans told y'all this, his first gig, Evans, you know, negotiated with the guy, you know, and um, it was on Prospect Avenue, someplace where the black door was, and one of them holes in the wall, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> he negotiated, and the guy was like, oh, I'm going to pay you, you know, you get the crowd, you know, we have a bar, you know, you're going to get money. Right. So he said, they set up, they played, Evans played really good, everybody danced all night long, it was crowded. He said at the end of the night when it was over with, he said, you know that guy gave Evans $50? Mm. $50. And you know what Evans did? He had five tens, he peeled off three of them and he wanted me to take 30. Mm. And I said, he said, this is what he said to me. I said, is he crazy? He said he really wanted to jack this guy up, kind of like. Right. He said, but, you know, they were young. They were in their 20s. And right. this was a man, you know, that did this to them. And um, <clears throat> I thought about, you know, how Evans was always humble, how he was willing to give more than half yeah. mm -hmm. of that little bit of money he made. Mm -hmm. And that was his first gig. And he was satisfied. He was happy, you know. It's like, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. But he also made cassettes. Right. And I remember at night he would, at yes. cassettes from the radio, right. I've done that myself, it's really hard because right. you, <laughs> when you when your song comes on, you have to be ready. Mm -hmm. And he would make cassettes for everyone because remember, um, mm -hmm. um, everyone from the Summer Youth Program, a lot of my friends, um, since my mom ran the Summer Youth Program, a lot of our friends, we got them summer jobs. And he, he would make everybody cassettes just to have music, you know, to listen to. Yeah, for free. For free. Mm -hmm. For free, you know. Um, I mean, I knew he loved the music. I just yeah. didn't see the part of him becoming a DJ out of it. Mar Marion, did you see it? Did it? Did he ever talk to you about it? You well, know? I know there was a conversation <clears throat> with um, my parents where he said he didn't want to go finish college. Well, that was after he was being after detained. He, right. After I gave him a <laughs> yeah, you know. That, and, I mean, because it, it was in force. It was like, okay, you're going to be a DJ now. And he's like, Shoot. So, <laughs> and, and, you know, and I remember my father was like, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that. And I think, um, you know, I was there and I says, you know what? I'm like, people have dreams. I'm like, we've all had dreams that none of us ever followed. 
you know, I'm like, you've had dreams and you didn't follow your dreams. And here we all are. I'm like, let him follow his dream. I'm like, at the end of the day, what's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. Nothing. He, it just doesn't happen, but you have to give him his chance. And that was something that, you know, he wanted to do. He loved music um, so much. He and did. It was, and he just, really did. And it was just everything. I remember when recently, I think Eddie, he was shooting a, a little blurb for something, and I was the camera person <laughs> with his thing. And, you know, someone asked, he had the three questions, like, what was your favorite song? And he said he didn't have one. And... I, it struck me funny because I'm like, you don't have a favorite song out of everything you have, you know, all the albums, all the 45s. And he was like, no. And I had to sit down and think myself, what was my favorite song? And I'm like, I don't have one either because you love so many <laughs> Same, songs. Yeah, yes, it's a very difficult it's just, question. It's a very difficult people, question yeah, that yeah, you yeah. don't have. You know, a favorite song. And, and it's like every different song, every song has, uh, is a different, different soundtrack yeah. to a moment. To a moment in your and, life. And to yeah. an emotion and yeah. a moment. And, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, depending on what you're feeling, right. yeah. that's your favorite song. So for him, it was like, you know, hip hop. I know for me, it was like, you know, Earth, Wind and & Fire and everything else. And like Chuck Mangione, the first time, you know, I heard Feel So Good. I was like, wow, what is, you know, what is this? Who is that? And And that was how he was with, Houdini and you know mm -hmm. those acts of that time who were coming up you know during that time but you stay on top of music like you listen to Pharrell you listen to like all the new stuff not really and you that do. was you that did. was that was the joke <laughs> between he and I because I refuse to buy Apple music I'm probably one of ten people in the world who doesn't subscribe to Apple music I will go to iTunes and buy a song. You want to own it. Yeah. I, but I will not subscribe to Apple Music. And that stunts me because I don't hear all of the newest music because I'm still stuck in the 70s to 2000 as far as music I right. listen to. And, it, and we would laugh. He was like, I would spend money to buy Apple News, but I wouldn't buy Apple Music. <laughs> and I, he would buy Apple Music and not buy Apple News. And when Vanity Fair had done an article on the 50 years of hip hop, yeah. I couldn't send it to him because he didn't have Apple News. So that was the joke. <laughs> You know, between us. You know, Marion, if it helps you feel, if it makes you feel any better, I subscribe to Apple Music and Spotify, and I'm also in the set. And I don't go beyond 70s. Well, I, I probably go before 70s too, but nothing yeah. past. How, how did you guys feel when he started, like when he actually quit his job and he started DJing full time? I was so happy for him. Me too. You were. I was, I was happy. happy. I was very happy. Yeah. It's, it's one of those moments where you don't really fathom that's possible. Yeah, you right? know, I was very, I was very happy for him. How did did he announce? Did he let you guys know? Or like, <laughs> how did, you guys? yeah, like did he like? Take, I'm just kind of wondering. <clears throat> what do you thing, mean as far as quitting his job? And yeah, 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 I mean, I think like. Well, you know, he did both for a while. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. he yeah. really yeah. did. But I yeah. feel like all of us, like most of us, mm -hmm. like you know, we had to, we had a, a job and then we DJ'd. Yeah. And then there was that, that was that one special day when we had we were like, look, I, I think I could quit my job. Yeah. It's getting in the way of the DJ shit. Yeah, yeah. But, but, I, it, but it but it's like that rare occasion. But I never announced it to anybody. But I, I was just wondering if he just shared it with y'all. <laughs> but yeah, but I know? just think with him, it was at the point working for light. You know, going to the Hamptons and then mm. flying yeah. to Vegas back and forth and everything else. And that's when maybe he realized that this is. This is it. A possibility. I yeah. think the move to Vegas for him was was huge. It was huge. Um, mm -hmm. And and that's where it all kicked off, you know. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, honestly, it, like you, and you know, never, and you, Eddie. I mean, you guys were like kind of pioneers on the East Coast in New York, because like, you know, even at the time when I was gonna move to Vegas, all the promoters, club owners in New York is like, that's career suicide. There's nothing in Vegas, mm -hmm. guys. Oh, really? Yeah, they were like, you're, you know, that's, that's the, you know, they were like, they were literally saying, I'm going to see you back here in a year. <laughs> Boy, were they wrong. I mean, yeah, that, that yeah, was, right? were they telling yeah. you the same thing? Yeah. Yo, the, the, the exodus from, as far as nightlife and hospitality goes, that every, a lot of people followed suit. They right. saw that there was a gold rush in Nevada. Right. And there was a booming bottle service kind of nightclub scene that was, that was, um, 
blossoming. And you know, Nevin and I were we were lucky to to link up with the people that we worked for in New York because they were going places. They did things the right way. The Light Group, mm-hmm. yeah. Light Group. Uh, it was called the Jet Corporation at the Jet time. Corporation. Andrew Sasson, um, Greg Breyer was his partner for a while. But you know, we we connected at Jet Lounge. It was great. It was a kind of a um, one a, a kind of an exclusive spot in Soho for a while, and then the Camptons, you know that whole vibe. And you know when Andrew picked up the, picked up the phone and called me and called Never, we felt we, they they get, they instilled that sense of like job security in the world of DJing to us, and we which, rode which with we'll him, never see was, again. Yeah. Which we'll, yeah. ne- <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll never see yeah. that again. Yeah, you know so, what I'm saying? Yeah. No, wait, so wait, wait. What was the first time you heard about Eddie? You, you, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Yeah. I never even heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> Not the first time I've, I've heard that. Right? Girl, I, know, wait, she, see, I know you were I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. I knew I I'm knew what she was gonna say. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, Eddie. I did know oh, about see, Eddie because I knew you guys um did Jet Lounge and everything together. Yeah. But I had never I don't think I'd ever met you we didn't uh, meet until until so very deep you, into so what did you hear about where did you what was the so first time you heard wait, about i Go actually ahead. nicole might yeah. know yeah <laughs> remember the days of myspace of course so i was doing evans well never's myspace page and there was an article with both um never and Eddie, oh i know which one that, and yeah. i put it up on myspace i knew when i was smoking a cigarette with the smoke and the black yes. and white one yeah yes. yeah that was for yeah 944 yes. magazine it was that, back to back that picture almost never happened they were so they were highlighting all the major clubs in Las Vegas and and highlighting the the talent for each one of those places and originally um, they wanted to put me at the bank with and no disrespect to to this this friend of mine is a DJ David Christian but I just didn't have the story I didn't have the history with him so I was just like you know I don't really feel connected to the bank because that was kind of like my tail end of employment with the light group. But Jet, Jet's me and Neva's house, you know, at the right. time. This is, you know, I mean, this is where we kind of, I said, I, I want to be, I, we need to be in the picture together. So they made, at the photo studio, at the at the studio, they were like, okay, we're going to switch this up. And that's when that, and I love that picture. That yeah. picture's great. That's when I was like gone, right? And Because I, I would have been in that picture with y'all. <laughs> 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 But it's funny, and the the shop. I would have like in between your shoulders. Like, uh, <laughs> the for, shop was going strong. We had every di- like every DJ that went in for the shoot had a new T-shirt on. Everybody, oh, yeah. and the photographer was like, "Does anybody wear anything except for new?" Like everybody wore new yeah, apparel. And, and the new that new was, was the was the clothing shop that that never and I opened. Yeah. So like, I in two thousand seven. In 2007, I had a lot of money saved up, and everyone was like, buy a house, buy a house. And I went to Neva's house, and I went to your house, and I'm like, these dudes got these big-ass houses, and then they got these extra rooms that they no one even goes into these rooms, <laughs> Yeah. right? And then they go shopping for the furniture for these rooms, that nobody and no goes one ever in. goes into. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, yo, I'm pretty young. You know, I was like 28. I was just like, yo, like, why would I get a three bedroom, four bedroom house and then furnish it and then like spend, you know, 15K or 10K per room to furnish the shit on top of getting a house, paying this mortgage? And I was like, I wanna do something. I wanna like open a business. And I was just like, I would talk to me and Neva would like, you know, we would, Always have to go to New York or L.A. to get the gear. So right. we were like, yo, let's let's open a clothing boutique. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, I was like, yo, I'm going to put up. He was like, yo, just give me. I'm like, put, give me. I forgot what I asked him to give me. Like I said, give me like 10, 15 K. And I was like, and I'll put up the rest. And uh, I, I think I ended up putting up like 80 or something like Jeez. more than that. Lord Damn, you got a lot of yeah. safe right, Rich. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> that's, the, that's the notorious scene. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord. There was a time I was walking into the hospital, and I'm in, and, and I'm like getting into, like, I'm in the hallway, and I'm here, and I just hear, Lord Jesus. And I'm like, oh, scene's here. <laughs> yes, I called on Jesus. Yeah. And so, you know, never had a retail background. You know, I had a, a semi-retail uh, import manufacturing background. So, but we were like re- really DJs. But really, when we opened the store, we had to crack down and like grow up and really take the shit seriously because 
we started losing money fast. But you guys are one of the first streetwear yeah. stores yeah. in Vegas. Oh, it was but you know, yeah. businesses usually do lose at first before they. Yeah, and we opened at the profitable. wrong time. We opened at the end of 2007. Right before the crash. Right then, before the recession. Yeah, and then the yeah. recession hit 2008. Mm-hmm. And then, honestly, the fact that we made it through the recession, because that's when all these other st- smaller streetwear stores closed yeah Mm -hmm. and we ended up being the only one like when the dust settled after the recession we were the only like we were the only survivors it was like forrest gump with like bubble gump shrimp yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. you know know when that storm came and they were the last and they were the only shrimp boat boat. and then forrest was like yo yo shrimping was easy after that (laughs) yeah 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 (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was like me and never. We were Lieutenant Dan after the, after the recession hit. After the recession hit, we were like, "Damn, these teas selling out." Yeah, we got easy to sell these teas, man. Yeah. We should add more uh, to the orders. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, we were just, and then you know, we expanded. But I want to like when when he came to y'all, did he tell you he was starting? A, a, oh yes, yeah, he did. yes he did. He was wow. so proud. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. was so proud, and I'm. I said, "Go for it." Yeah. He got like, some money so from proud. me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're part of 15k. <laughs> now I was undercover. Yes. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You was undercover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're the you're out. the police officer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of the family. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I am. I was. Un- <laughs> I helped him out. Yeah. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yes. So yes. then we, you know, we had the clothing store, and we opened that in 2007, mm-hmm. and you know. Um, and then, you know, it was like, you know, I think we were really, really killing it. I think we, we lost money, obviously, the first two years. And the third year, we broke even. That's good. Yeah. And then the fourth year, it just started making money, 15. And then in, and then 2012. 14, 14, 15, we, we just started going mm-hmm. crazy in half. 2012, you guys did something great. You guys did your own T-shirts. You guys cut yeah. and sew, and that yeah. took. Sweatshirts. Here it took go. everything by storm. Yeah. yeah. But that was that was when, you know. <clears throat> When you guys were in that photo shoot, at that time I had left the light group. So I was full time at the at kind of like I was kind of the businessman. I was kind of banned from from working in Vegas. Was, I had a non compete. Yeah, free yeah, cricket. Time. Really? But that's why I, like my, all my savings was going into the store and then it's like trying to get gigs out of town at that time. But I remember it was just me and Neva. And I, and I will say this. I'm always dragging Neva into these yep. things. <laughs> <laughs> so like you know when i talked to him about the podcast he didn't he didn't know what the fuck was going on <laughs> he did it he just was like oh I'll, I'll you know i was like yo i'm gonna do a podcast so you, you'll sit in and talk he's like all right cool fuck it and then i kept saying like yo come back and let's just let's talk he didn't want to do the podcast he thought and, he was on one episode and then he just kept coming <laughs> back and coming back but that's the that's the thing about never and even with the store it was so hard to get to survive mm-hmm. and there was these times where like i think one of the lowest points in my life was like i think we were late on rent it was probably the third year when we broke even mm-hmm. and i remember it was october and november and i think i it was around the time when i i basically lost my residency in vegas and i had non-compete i was like almost damn near dead broke and i was trying to like survive and me and Neva, we, you know, we would stay up to 2 a.m. just prepping for like Black Friday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm over there and, then, you know, we couldn't make November rent. I remember this. And I, and I called my mother and it's the first time like I felt like I was the biggest loser in my life. Because mm-hmm. I asked her, I said, you know, can I borrow like, like $4,000? $4, and I've never asked my mother for money. And my mother really don't have money like that. And she sent it to me and I, I felt like, it was the most shameful time of my life. And at the end of the, and then I remember I, we were just hoping for Black Friday because I didn't have December rent for the mm-hmm, store. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Neville was always there. And, he, and the thing is, I feel like he was always a good luck charm. Mm. And he was always there and he was always loyal. It's like mm-hmm. in the battlefield of life, mm-hmm. he was just there. He like, there's so many motherfuckers that I would do shit with and they would run away. Mm-hmm. Or they would just fall back. If it wasn't popping, too much work, they would fall back. Mm-hmm. But Neville was always there, and he just stuck through it there. And, you know, me and him would get into it, too, all the time. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, and we would have our times where we fucking yell at each other, and I'm tired of you, crook, and I'm, <laughs> I'm like, never, you, you know, we have this shit, but, that's you know. That's family, yeah. That's, in the end, that's family, family and yeah. we always stuck together. And do, mm-hmm. through the, the rough times at New, 
to you know the times when I would go ballistic on this dude and never with the podcast and everything like that, he was always there and he always stuck through it. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, and and I was you know I remember I was I talk with people they're like why do you keep why do you keep you know doing these businesses or these things with with never you know what I'm saying why do you keep doing that? And I said you know I don't know I don't I don't know why but I'm like yo if I have to do the shit I want want to do it with him I want to yeah. do it with my boys with my family right, right I want right, to come right. up with my family yeah right you know in the end and it's like I, I don't know how to explain it you know what was one of your proudest moments for never in, in in your memories if I could ask seeing Marion and Nicole that you remember I was always proud of him mm. That's uh, kind of like one thing I never said to him that I was proud of him. Mm. But I think he knew it, you know, in my love for him, you know. I was always proud of Evans. Even when he was a little Catholic school, we laugh about. <laughs> Me and Evans, we had a unique relationship, you know, other than music, you know. So I know he knew I was proud of him. You know, like I said, when I came out here, how many times I've been to Vegas? I think <laughs> three times. Yeah. You know, but that last that that last time that I was out here, um, I did. I told him I was like, yeah, I'm proud of you, because I went to the store. Y'all mm -hmm. had the store. Yeah. 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 He had the house. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But I think I had been to the house before. He had the house before then. But that was right. such a proud moment for honestly for us as mm -hmm. us as DJs, you know, yeah. Sean. I've, I remember we talk about that all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Him being like one of the first dudes. He was one of the first dudes that I know to to buy a house for DJ money. Yeah. With, from you know DJ what? And money. you told me that when I came out here yeah. that time because that's when I first met you. Yeah. Do you remember? I remember because yeah. I because that was a defining moment for me, and I've mm -hmm. told never this myself. I said oh. when you bought that house from DJ Money, mm -hmm. I, I was like. This is possible, yep. and yeah. like yo, like there is no limit, yeah. and it actually planted the seed for like yo, like let's open a shop. Like there is no limit. Right. If you could go and buy a house, and I'm over here, and I'm well, I don't want to buy a house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm like right, yo, right, we can right. let's open a store. And honestly, <clears throat> after we opened that store, I'm you know. How many DJs opened the store afterwards? There was like, <laughs> yeah, you tried. Yeah, you opened the door for that too, Trail, right? It's like all moment. these DJs just started opening like retail stores. Do some and entrepreneurial shit. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like side they, they started yeah. branching out and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, and Marion, what was what was your proudest moment? I think I was always proud of him. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I think we've always supported each other in mm -hmm. all the whatever moments in life mm -hmm. that um, we all went through. I think. With me, with him, I think when he had the billboard up, mm. you know, that yeah. was something he was really, really yeah, he proud really was of. Proud of that. He yeah. was proud of that. And I remember I was out here and we took a cab just to wherever it was, you know, <laughs> and just to look at it. So, um, you know, I was always I'm proud of everyone in our family, you know, for all of our accomplishments, whatever right. they are, you know, um, but I was, he was really proud of that moment. And I was just proud that, again, like when we spoke before, you know, how wonderful was it to have a dream and follow it through? Because not many people get to do that. You know, people go to work every day and they're just working to Survive. make ends meet. You know, money is the means to an end. But, you know, he was able to every day do absolutely what he loved, even, you know, during the pandemic and you know he was telling me about twitch and everything else and i'm like well you know go ahead you have nothing to lose to do it and then he turned around and he's like uh, can you be my moderator or whatever and i'm like yeah you know i can do, you know i can do that you know so um do you love you guys love those twitch streams that he did right i absolutely i think so because did. it was the pandemic what else yeah. could you do but watch twitch? but you, you but got no, to really I see loved, what he did right exactly you got yeah. to really see his taste in music, his energy, his but we, rapport. But we, we already knew, knew he it. had that. Uh, you know, it wasn't. But really I think, you know? I think oh, yeah. except when he would, he would be, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that got to, yeah, that was a little too much to cussing. Yeah, <laughs> <I think. laughs> yeah, but yeah. for me, I think for him was one day he was playing and my mom, you know, I had put it on the TV in the living room. Yeah. And then, you know, I came online, you know, with my 
what was it my but name you, or whatever yeah. and he knew it was me and i'm like you there's someone here you know watching you and he started yeah, tearing, tearing up tearing crying up. because he's like well, okay i gotta stop because my mom is watching <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. curse then right he didn't curse then. but you know yeah. my mother supported him we she i guess loved, because yeah. he was the baby. the baby we yeah. were always proud of him but when he was djing in, in, in the places wherever my mother would go really yeah my oh mom my. would go yes. we went to yeah. um when light had the big thing yeah. and he had his own room in where was that i don't know manhattan somewhere. no well, well, here on light, light new york on 54 no what was no, it? no here bellagio. in vegas yeah. oh in vegas yeah light at bellagio was the first yeah. spot yeah yeah so we were there or maybe the, it was jet at mirage there were different it was rooms. mirage yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah, mirage yeah. and it was he was I, in the in the hip-hop room he was yeah, in the, the hip-hop yeah, room. yeah yeah and we all went mommy me and top <laughs> and of course i'm like okay i was worried about my mom being there with everything else you know but she was I was falling asleep and she was still going, you know. And she would there. even when he was in New York, she yeah, to she would go to yeah. the places. She yeah, would go. That wasn't her first and time. Yeah. No, it wasn't, but it was yeah, just New a York. whole thing yeah. to see her, you know. Yeah, she all at the party. Him. Yeah. Like in the club and the rest of the younger ones are falling asleep and she's still yeah. up, you know. Yeah, I mean, she went to see Prince twice. I mean, come yeah. on now. You know, she liked Prince, you know. <laughs> so she supported him. Yeah, she did. And Amazing. um I thought that was really important to him. I think that that might have encouraged him more because we all supported him in yeah. what he did. You know, yeah. there was no doubt. You know, like I said, yeah. when he said it, I was surprised, but I didn't say, oops, don't. I yeah. just said, no you know, said, that's what you want to do. Be, okay, you want to be a DJ? Go ahead, <laughs> try it. And he did try it and he liked it and he stayed with took, it. Took all our records with him too. <clears throat> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stole my yes, album. he did. He, and sure he did. took some of my records. He yeah, was like, he "Oh, you listening our... to gospel music now? You don't need these." <laughs> <laughs> he took, the... <laughs> he took yes, our he albums, yeah. the forty fives, yeah. everything. Yeah. Forty fives wow. and everything. Yes, he nice. did. Nice. Yeah. 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 Now, <laughs> never, never shared a story on the podcast that one of his first gigs in New York. I don't remember the name of the place. But you guys, it was the first time you guys had all come out to see him. And he was really excited. And then you guys showed up and the room was dead. And he said that that was one of the worst feelings for him, that, that he thought you guys were not going to, like, oh, why? think no. he was going to make it. No, not a, never, 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 no. never, ever a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> never, no. ever, no. Yeah. You know, he, he, truthfully, I have to say, I wasn't there. Because when he started playing music, I was working and I worked nights. Yeah, I worked midnights. I worked eight p.m. to four. So I never really got to hear him play in New York. And and not and like I said, when I came out here for Vegas that time, that was I, I retired. That yeah. was the first time I heard him play music. Hmm. No, yeah, I yeah. have. Yeah, yeah. She's, she even here. Yeah, yeah. But I never. Yeah, because I always worked. So I had babies and yeah. <laughs> But I, I knew he was doing good things because he had my records. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, all of them. He had my records. Yeah, I knew it was good. You know, it, it's funny. Um, you know, uh, we had a conversation. Obviously, when when never passed, we're doing the funeral arrangements and scene, and you know, you, we were speaking, mm -hmm. and you were like, you know, we we you know we talked, and mm -hmm. we want the records to go to y'all. Yeah. And then I said, well, I I I'm not. I'm not a vinyl dude. Like, mm -hmm. I, I love music, but I actually hated the process of like buying records yeah. and like. He loved that. Yeah, he, he loved, loved that. Oh Even my God. Too, like, Every time he came to New York City, he had to, to go see him. I'm, seen, I'm going down to get some records. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He made, he made he, it back to New York a lot more often than I did when I moved yeah. out here. So yeah. whenever, whenever there was some things that I needed, he's like, what he would ask me, he's like, I'm going to Rock and Soul. Let me know yeah, what you want. Yeah, rock and Soul. Soul. Right. He's like, let me know what you need. I'm yeah. going to go see Ruben. I'm going to go see whoever. And I'd give him a yeah. list and he'd come back yeah. with all this great And, and yeah. I told you, scene. I was like, if there's one man you have to give the records yeah, to, it's Eddie. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Sure. Eddie, and, Eddie and Anderson Pack. Still like vinyl, right? <laughs> yeah. we'll you still take like them vinyl. All over the world. Well, that I, whole room full of vinyl. We yeah. Had, yeah, I know. I love that room. Spent a lot of hours in that room. Yeah. <laughs> it got hot yeah. as hell in there, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. It be, yeah. It yeah. That was fun, man. Was you wouldn't fun. cut that AC on. Man. But yeah, we well, we took oh, it was mentioned on the pod one time. His um, he had a um, was it LaFace Le Records, I think, um, uh, compilation, and AP wanted um, um, you know what's up, uh, Donnell Jones. 
Yeah. And I never had I never had the twelve inch, but he's really? like, oh, I got it. I swear to God. Oh, no, I, I just ne- I ne- or I, I had. Crazy. I also had a lot of records that I lost in a flood in Jersey and stolen from me in Jersey City too. Really? Yeah, 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 a lot, a lot. If I if I had all the records, I'd still I I had throughout my journey in music. Uh, yeah, I'd have to get a bigger house, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, but uh, yeah. I remember yeah. when you first told me that though. I was like, you know, if anyone has first dibs on all of this, it's your son Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're like, he, nah, he don't want to be. You don't want none of this. <laughs> yeah. It is a labor of he love. Not, but, you know, yeah. It's he's a labor of into, love. Yeah, he's not into that. No, <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> hey, Nicole, did, what, was your, what was your proudest moment? My perspective was yeah. definitely different, um, mainly because I'm the niece. Yeah, mm-hmm. eleven years behind him. She's and like the little sister. She doesn't yeah. realize. Yeah, they grew up together. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, and um, so yeah, so I always thought he was gonna make it. Whatever he did, I thought that he was gonna be great. Because he was it. the By cool. Default, he was the coolest motherfucker. He, he was, was always cool. there. You know, he always had stories. Nintendo was my thing. Yep. Yeah. And he played it with me all night long. I'm talking about able to get infinity lives for mario <laughs> and i'm just like you're the greatest whatever you're doing you're gonna do it you're gonna make it you're gonna be big like yeah when i'm giving him toy cars of corvettes like this is gonna be your future car like this is it yeah i know that's I, the one. I learned how to drive before him Jeez. yes <laughs> You know, how many, you know so how many, many times, times to you're teach him how to drive for years and Jesus. years and years. That's the one dream that never ever <laughs> <heard. It's laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, poor guy. It's so funny. He that. called me about a month before you passed, and he's like, yo, I need a new TV. It would take me to Sam's Club. Yeah. And I was like, all right, cool. But then he was always like, can you take me to Sprouts? Can you take me here? Can I'm like, yeah, of course. And I'm just like, why didn't you never learn how to drive? He goes, it wasn't important to me. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it, yeah. It really I'll just take a yeah. cab everywhere. And I'm like, all right. It's the same thing for me. I mean, I don't know how to drive to this day either. Really? I just took him no. to the bank I today. liked what you said. It's overrated. It it's, is overrated. I think it's just like, why? Like, if I could, you know, get someone to drive me and I could do work in the back seat, I don't have to, like, worry about traffic or nothing. it's a New Yorker thing. It, it is. I mean, you used to ride in buses big time. and trains and, it doesn't, you know, you could get around New It's York. not Every, convenient Everyone's, to everyone's like, yeah, everyone's telling me, like, yo. But you don't understand the freedom of when you have a car, and I'm like, that shit don't seem free because like I gotta find parking. That's right. Parking it's is easy. Road rage. Parking is easy. Yeah. It's you gotta get cut right. off once in a while. People cut you yeah. off. It's, it's See, you're already getting upset thing. talking about yeah, it. Yeah, you know? it's oh, aggravating. Right. It's oh. really <laughs> aggravating. You know, especially yeah. in New York, you can't find parking. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's, not, there's do, nothing more you. liberating to me than stepping out and then it's being like, and I got nothing. I don't have to worry about shit until you gotta get a TV. Until you gotta get a TV. Or go to the bank. Like today. Eddie, that's what friends are for. Exactly, hey, see, hey, exactly. That's, it. that's what friends exactly. are for. You but know? we ended Jesus. up, yeah, we went to Sam's and got the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, I, told, I told him, I said, I'll take you on Tuesday. And he's like, all right, cool. But then he ended up going like on Sunday. Yeah. He's like, yeah, my sister took me. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. But he would always call me, can you take me to Sprouts? Can you take me to this? I need to go here. I need to go there. Can you drop me off all the way to the east side to a record store? Because he's meeting up somebody to go digging. I'm like, sure. It was like 20 minute drive. I'm like, sure. Like 30 minutes. I'm like, yeah, Record City. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It was far. So, wait, wait. Is that, you've just always been proud of him. There, oh, that, yeah. there was no defining moment for you where you were just kind of like, wow, this is crazy. Like, you um, know. so I want to say when I was doing his MySpace, that's when I would find out like other details about him being a DJ and things like, Places that he played. I didn't know he had a I, MySpace moderator at the time. I was just, <laughs> that was ahead of his time. Too. He, had, he had an app on his I helped him on his page. Twitch. I'm, I'm going to tell you something about yeah. Never. I'll be like asking, like, yo, like, He'll have his niece being the moderator on his MySpace, and I'll be asking him about shit. He's like, nah, you know, I'll take care of that shit. He'll just tell me he takes care of it. And I get, like, uh, I guess a text message or a phone call while I'm at work, and he's like, yo, can you update this and blah, blah, blah. Can you I'm update like, my top five? Yeah. Sure. So I'm at work. I'm supposed to be working at HBO. But meanwhile, I'm, like, playing with MySpace and updating his MySpace. Wow. But, no, there was one thing that he did. Um, 
he played for Pamela Anderson's wedding. Wedding, yeah. And oh. I was like, and then yeah. he oh, said yeah, he had yeah, an yes. article for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 What? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What yeah. wedding was this? Was this uh, Tommy this Lee? This was like Tommy when, Lee. near Tom. Was it Tommy Lee? Lee? No, no. no. It, was, no. it was the last Steve Solomon. Who, the oh, uh, oh. Uh, so Rick Solomon. Rick Solomon. Rick Solomon. Solomon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's. I just knew it was Pamela Anderson. I was like, mixing it. Yeah, yeah. Rick was real tight with Andrew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicole was like, it was some white guy. It had to be Tommy <laughs> Lee. Some guy. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> there was Wrong. somebody beyond. You can't say that. Andy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he, did, he, he was really proud when um, he did, um, who was it? Uh, the Rolling Stones? Uh, Mick Jagger? Mick Jagger's yeah. um, party or books thing. Well, I know Mick, Mick Jagger came to light one night. Uh, after they they played at MGM MGM Grand Garden, this yeah. was two thousand two or two thousand three, and I remember he came in uh, and, and never might have been DJ on that night. But I don't yeah. know if it, I you know that that's the only thing I can think of. But yeah, that's yeah. Coming to Vegas, you don't know what you're gonna do, especially yeah. working with who we worked with. There was like that, that was like the you know before Tau Group. I mean, Light Group was around a little bit before Tau Group, at least mm-hmm. in this market, and. Uh, they always had the celebs coming in, Leonardo DiCaprio and Mark Wahlberg and stuff like that. So we'd always have some kind of requests from them or D- DJ situation with them. <laughs> usually it was positive for never, and I usually created a, an issue. <laughs> I probably <laughs> lost my temper. <laughs> Fuck Leonardo DiCaprio. He's at, he's, at, he's at a dress code anyway, and he's smoking reefer at the table. He should be kicked out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'd be, it'd be like these frantic situations of like uh, managers running around like, hey, Crooked, let me get your hat. And I'm like, why? Like, Leonardo DiCaprio wants a hat. And yeah, he, it, it I, think he, I think he really? took Neva's hat at one time. I think you might be right. Really? Yeah, he yeah, took yeah, Neva's yeah, hat? Yeah, it was crazy. Hey, really? They were like, yo, like, Neva, we need your hat. Leo wants this. Leo, Leo wants, wants that. And I'm like, like what the what? Leonardo just wearing, he probably had to adjust the shit out of that yeah. snapback yeah. with Neva's big head. <laughs> he had a big head, yeah. <laughs> That was like probably on one or two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Holding on. <laughs> it's like that. So can you guys tell us the story of how Neva got his DJ name? Because there's like a few theories, but no one really knows. Like It was just his name. It was just his, his ne- name. Letters he mixed yeah. up and yeah. came up with Neva. Yeah. But I heard yeah. something about Neverland or oh, Never she, Never. Or what? She was little. What was? What did you say? She wanted to be Tinkerbell. Because she wanted uh, to be Tinkerbell had, to Never had, Neverland. Yeah. He had another name. I wish I dug it up before oh, yeah, I got here. He did here, have another name but, before he became Never. Oh my God. Yes. We only yes. know DJ Evan. Yeah, or something. <laughs> it wasn't Black Panda. It wasn't. No, know. it wasn't. <laughs> that was, no, it wasn't Panda. I, I gave him that name. Yeah. He definitely had another he name. Did. There was right. another business card. I promise. I'll make sure you have it mm. in time yeah but okay. but yeah. yeah and then yes with his name yeah. never mm-hmm. yeah and yes she, me being his niece she i tinkerbell, tinkerbell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in the mix <laughs> well, what, yeah i mean so what what did you get because i always remember him telling me it like never was like evan but never like right. almost in well, reverse right yeah, 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 wait yeah, we right. look at the name evan he just took the last letter and yeah he put it to the front yeah, yeah. And you know he was so, so like, proud when he you know? did it. He was telling me, "Yeah, I just switched it." Uh, I was like, right, "Okay, right. Evan." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know he got a reputation out here. It was like, well, like why they call him Never? Because he never says no to a drink. You know. Oh. <laughs> 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 or they say like, "Oh, well, like never, never, never on time." You know. <laughs> oh, now that one I like better. He's never yeah. on time. That's yeah, always, that's him. That yeah. was. He it was, was tough. I mean, we, we well, we both well, Desert Club, which is the first place we all, a lot of us all lived. I mean, I, I moved there. You would you would live there. Never lived there. My father <laughs> lived, lived there. We lived there, and we all shared the same air mattress. Yeah. I bought yeah. an air mattress. I passed it. I think to my dad, to Never, and then to my dad, then to Crooked. It went. It, it got some. Anyone from the East Coast who came to Vegas in our <laughs> circle. It's like a rite of passage to get that Everyone mat- air slept mattress. on this air mattress. Oh, God, and we just oh pat- it was like. I was the last one. Yeah, Sean yeah. was the last one to oh, get it. Slap, yeah, sloppy it, like it, it ended with you. The legacy yeah. ended with you with the air mattress. But, you know, we so we lived at Desert Club and, and it was conveniently located because we moved out here to take the residency at Light at Bellagio. So Desert Club was right on the corner of Koval and Flamingo. And uh, it was walking distance, basically, but not necessarily with records. We're still on records, so it was tough. Wow, sometimes wow, cabs, wow. sometimes taxis, even if we called that yellow checker star elite. It was Ace, right? Yeah. Well, there would ace be the- Ace Cab? There was Ace. A Cab, A Cab. 
That's yeah, what but that there was, was, there was, was the one that, that was saved. For, there was a number saved for industry in Vegas that got there like five minutes or less. Oh, they called it that. Yellow Checker Star Elite Fleet, the Elite Fleet. There was like a special number you called, and they would normally be there. Sometimes they wouldn't show up, and we'd have to run up Flamingo Road with four, like 400 records behind us. Oh, my God. To, on two luggage carts, you know, wobbling around, and sometimes, you know. You know, we would crazy. fall behind schedule a little bit sometimes. I remember, like, uh, yeah, at that time, we had to call, like, you know, probably, like, 20 minutes before just to get a cab. Mm-hmm. And we called, there was one company called ACAB, so me and Neva would always use that company. And But it is the, the craziest shit is you would have to tip at least $5 every trip. Wow. So, like, you know, the trip would be, like, 12, 12 15 and then you, you basically spending $20. Spending $20. Yeah, $20 sure. at the time a, a trip. And then and then I, I think, like, never, like, was telling me, like, yo, like, no one's coming to pick me up now. So now, like, you know, it's not even 20 minutes. I have to, like, call 40 minutes in advance. Wow. wow. And then I was uh, I was in the cab one time, and then I heard on the, on the dispatch, they're like, you know, Evan, Evan is at, you know, blah, 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 needs a pickup. And the driver was like, oh, we never picked that guy up, man. And I was like, wait, wait, why don't you pick him up? He's like, he don't tip. (laughs) Never tip. (laughs) And they were like, oh, his name is Never Tip. Never tip. (laughs) Never tip. tip. (laughs) No, no, so then I called him and I was like. That's not like him. I don't know. No, he didn't. He's a little tight. He's a little tight, bro. He's a little tight with it. But at the club, he would take care of people. He would take care of people at the club. Because he was already, you know. But at the taxi, he already's like, man, $2 is good. $2 is good. You know, one dollar is good. Yeah, there was nothing yeah, funnier than watching father, Never yeah. make it like a big purchase. Like we went, what did we do? We went buying studio equipment one time. We yeah. went to Guitar Center. He got an MPC and like uh, like a, um, a MIDI inf- interface and stuff like that. And I think when they gave him the total, like he just like like <laughs> just lost that. <everything. laughs> like, and then, but then I'm like, Never, we're gonna go to the Apple Store. I'm gonna buy a new G5 or whatever, a new computer. And I made. <laughs> When they gave the total of the, the 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 Mac, he's like, "I feel so much better." Yeah. <laughs> like, was... <laughs> yeah, I remember. I, I had to tell him, "I'm like, yo, Nev, they're not picking you up because you're not tipping." He's like, "What do you mean? I give them two dollars? I give them a dollar?" I'm like, "Nah, you like that's why I give them five because mm-hmm. they remember and they always gonna pick me up if you give yeah. them five. Right, yeah. Right. And then he that's ended true. up doing that shit, and he was like, that's "Can't funny. believe I'm giving these motherfuckers five dollars." <laughs> 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 it's funny, like we were talking about his name, right? You and the whole family. What is this? You plural, like you pluralize words and names, so you call him Evans. Sometimes, and you say, sometimes, you, but you pluralize sometimes. But I remember even your cousin was like making a speech at the at the funeral service, and she said rhinos. Like she, she it's a, <laughs> <laughs> rhinos. All right, so since we talking about it, talk about that. I heard about that, that rhinos <laughs> thing and it wasn't like what she said okay. it's the wings there she gave it a wing. talking about? Yeah. ring spot right yeah. there yeah. Yeah. I don't even yeah. remember this story you want to come with me I said where, where are you going uh, we're going to go to rhinos I said rhinos I said what's rhinos so he says I wasn't too sure how you would feel about coming with me but I'm asking you if you want to go and I said you know what yeah I'll go I'll go. So we left the club about maybe two, three o'clock in the morning, maybe even somewhere in there. And um, I went with him to Rhinos along with Crooked, his DJ Crooked, okay, and Sean, his two friends who were here from Vegas. So we went to Rhinos. And when we left Rhinos, actually, I took a picture of the three of them outside. They were, you know, hanging. You were there. You were I don't there. Know. Was I there? Bro, you were there. <laughs> if he, he was there. 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 There's a picture. There's a picture. Yeah. There's a picture. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Took picture. Took picture. And y'all picture. had a good time. And let me tell yeah. y'all. You're being a, a y'all, let me tell you something. You're being a real cop right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, 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 and that Evans was much talked me. about Evans told after me the about funeral. That. Yeah. yeah. Evans told Wait, what happened about it? Nothing happened. Well, nothing. Y'all guys did nothing. Y'all No, she just shouldn't have brought it up at the funeral. 
Yeah. Remember yeah. the man so he said, was tight. "Yeah, who yeah. was we tight with her?" Yeah. 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 Oh, I mean, why he, he said, <laughs> "Save some things for the repast." Oh shit! Shout to Reverend Crenshaw, by the way. Right. Thank you. You got it, right, Jamie? I love him. Yeah. Yeah. Reverend Crenshaw already laid out. Shout out to Reverend Crenshaw. He was about. He was so good. And and it's something. It's something because see, seeing says she didn't listen to rap music, but I need to let y'all know quickly that I'm a preacher and a pastor, but I love rap music. Uh, I'm not going to say I love every form of it, enough, but, but, but I love rap music, and, 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 and I'm also a DJ. I never rose to his level, but I can go back to the days before we had all this fancy technology to where we didn't even have a mixer, and we would just be in the room, and we would have a left balance and a right balance on the receiver, and we didn't have techniques before we had techniques. We used to mix, right? Come on, anybody remember those days? I can take you back to even before we had the even before we had the equipment, I was in music and on high school with Slick Rick and Dana Day. We would we would put the cardboard on the table and DJ and beatbox and we would battle without even having a speaker. So 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 I don't say that qualifies me to stand here, but I know God, but I also know something about this DJ life. I, I know crooked good God Almighty. I, if you don't remember another name, you're going to remember Chris now. See, I might have to come to the repast so I can hear some of the stories that y'all didn't tell right now. Because I want to know how, how you got the name Crooked. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know y'all had a problem with that story that she said. Well, the that was a story that was supposed to be because I knew what the Rhino Club was. Yeah. And a lot of the women did not. And you guys did. And y'all laughed. Right. I yeah. knew what it was. They made Crooked get up and stand up. He's like, who is this Crooked? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, right. yes, yes. But every time, it, this is the, the problem with the, the funeral service. Every time there was some like debauchery or something like. It's Crooked. Some, something. Yeah, you were the one. Yeah, yeah Crooked. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. They were like, yo, so like we got lost and then Crooked was there. And like, yeah, yeah, he yeah, was like, yeah. Eddie Haskell to the Beaver on Leave It yeah. to Beaver. He was every Eddie time Haskell. It, everyone's yeah. like, yeah, we visited Never in Vegas mm -hmm. and we ended up, this happened and Crooked was there. Crooked and then, was and then there. The, 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 the Reverend, Reverend was like, who is this Crooked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. figure out why your name Crooked is later on. I was like, yes, Dang. yes, 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 yes. That was cute. The, this is the thing about the Rhino it's, spot. I know it sounds like, you know, it sounds debauchery. There was lap dancing going on. No, lap no, no, dancing. No, no. no. <laughs> there was a lot of chicken wings being eaten. Scene. No, no, but it was like, it was actually like, because everyone back in the day before social media, right? Mm -hmm. All the DJs got off at the same time at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and we all were kind of still up. Mm -hmm. And there, we, we didn't post videos of our gig. You know what I'm saying? We, mm -hmm. we didn't like, we didn't tweet how dope we did that night. We wanted to meet up and we were still energized. It's like, you know, when you're a performer and you just you got off stage, you want to go to the after party. There's a lot of adrenaline. Right, everybody, you, yeah. we, We're like full of adrenaline, yeah. and like, you know, I would be at one club, Never would be at somewhere else, you know, Five would be somewhere, Stone would be somewhere, Eddie would be somewhere, Graham. We have all these, like, literally a team of eight or ten DJs, and we're like, yo, let's go to Rhino and talk about what happened tonight, because there would be, like, something crazy that happened, or we'd be like, yo... This song is is like the biggest song right now, or yeah. like this celebrity came in and, and wild out, or and so we would gather at Rhino because it was the only spot open really at the time. That and yeah. Pepper Mill, you know yeah, what I'm Pepper saying? Pepper Mill sometimes like the sports book, uh, you yeah. know, Bellagio was a big one after out. hanging out at the sports book. Yeah, I mean, there were not good wings there, Cookie. That's it was, it was they still a Rhino at the end of the day. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 at the end of the day, that wasn't. I mean, I get what you're saying, but I'm what she I'm talked to, yeah. about, I know what she talked about. Evan said already told me about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It. So I knew what it was. I, I knew what happened that night at the Rhino. I'm trying her. to make Rhino sound beautiful, right? No, now. No. <laughs> oh my God, no. it's church. It wasn't. It wasn't a place <laughs> for her. It's to, church. You know, that's the first time. <laughs> ironically, it was our church. It was, it was, it was our gathering. Church. Yeah, <laughs> there was yes. a community <laughs> basket that you guys would give. Oh my God, that was actually the first place I ever DJed at ever in Las Vegas. Really, in 1998, before four years before I moved here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh. Uh, they, the used to do, they used to do after hours parties at Bowtown and uh, Gino Lapinto, who is now one of the owners over at Eleven in Miami. They used to partner up, and the strip club would stay active. There would still be girls giving dances, but now you could dance on like the stage, and you know they'd go till God. I don't even know. We went pretty late, but you know, every, and the thing is, everyone knew never. Even when we went to Rhino, everyone knew never. When I first moved out here, even till even to this day, yep, to this day, because like. I'll go, we'll go to certain clubs. I'll be like, yo, Nev, like, do you know the dude at the door? He's like, I don't know. We'll figure it out. So we'll go to yeah. the club and someone be like, yo, Nev, what's good? He knows everybody. Everybody. Even when we, everybody. Had, even when we had the podcast or we had um, the store new, mm-hmm. like people would not come to me to talk about business. They would talk to Nev. Mm-hmm. He was just more approachable. Yeah, he would take pictures with with listeners and stuff like that. Yeah, supporters. yeah, like so. Even like if I'm in, like I'd be in a club. We be we always stood next to each other. And my favorite thing was we would sit, we would lay back in a cut. And this is all probably all our favorite thing. Me and Sean, yeah. we love this. We lay back in a cut at a club, and we just talk shit. Mm-hmm. We analyze everything from yep. the lights, mm-hmm. the crowd, the tables, and we're like, you know, like the, just, the lighting sucks, or like you know. The service is bad. The bartenders oh, are bad. Mess. You know, we break everything down. You're not even mentioning. And we're just like, talking to shit. That you, yeah, the yeah. DJs too. And the DJs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the DJs. <laughs> and we're yeah. over. We're over like, analyzing the DJs. Like, I would have like, done this. Oh, I would have done that. Man, he's letting the song play a little long. Yeah. He must be lost. He, just, he don't know what to that. play next. I wouldn't have done you know? that. Yeah. You know? well, I would have done. That was yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 You know, oh, and the, the best thing is when we're like talking, and then we stop because we heard something so bad, and we just stop talking. We're like, okay. That's what you did, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, you know, someone would say, yo, what up, Crook? What up, Never? And then they would talk to him for a minute. Uh-huh. He's listening, you know, he's laughing. And he'd come to me, and they they walk away, and he'd be like, yo, they want to do business with us. And I'm like, well, why don't they talk to talk to, to me? me? And he's like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and then, But it'd be like that with the podcast, with everything. Like, everyone would rather talk to Never than talk to me. Mm-hmm. Right. And then later, everyone just says, like, yo, Crook, you're, you're just not approachable. Right. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, like, yeah. you're just intimidating, and Never's just like... He's easygoing. Very easygoing. Easy going. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. even I was talking with Sean, right? Mm-hmm. And this is a testament to Never. Sean was like, you know, when... When we made the announcement that never passed, and you know, e- even with the GoFundMe, and then you know, big shout out to everybody who contributed to the yes. GoFundMe. I just want to tell everyone I really um, read the comments mm. with the donations that there were people who donated that never even met. DJ never. I want to say because <laughs> I want to say Evan, but yeah, they um, they even donated from just watching. The road podcast. Yeah. You know, some of them said they they learned from this, and I just want to say thank you so much. I mean, it was a blessing, a real blessing. And if you watch his YouTube, the funeral on YouTube, you know, it was it was a blessing. It was a blessing, and that's thank you so much. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's all I could say. Thank you. And me too. Um, it's just a testament to. The person he was, yeah. you know, um, it was just amazing, you know, and we're very grateful. We're grateful for everything. You all, the friendships that we've all cultivated and that'll continue. <clears throat> and um, to everyone who contributed, be it, you know, with money or with kind words, loving thoughts and prayers, um, it was really appreciated yeah. and it means so much to us even just sharing their stories yeah and, and their yeah. stories encounters people. yeah and their experiences it was just amazing them, you know? yeah and yeah. it was helpful it helped to heal you know yeah. to read um the stories and yeah. the love and the yeah. shock you know and there were some people who were heartbroken as well yeah mm, there's everybody. a lot of heartbroken yeah. people besides us you know i, I just want to thank the dj and nightlife community Okay. Because yes. I, they really showed the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Like I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen the DJ community come together like this, and and even night nightlife, you know, they come together too. But the DJs, y'all really came together, and y'all really showed everybody really how impactful and important never was. Yeah. And it's funny because Sean even told me he's like, he's like, bro, like. Only never could bring all these people together like that. 
you know, like to me in, in, in our in my perspective, because he was so likable and lovable. Mm-hmm. Only he could bring everyone together like that. Because you remember, Sean, we were like, even if I passed away, Whoa. you passed away, like we got too many haters. <laughs> <laughs> Like, there'll be a lot of motherfuckers like you know, crooked, no good riddance. That motherfucker's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, we, we be struggling to hit 10k yeah. on the GoFundMe. <laughs> GoFundMe. Our GoFundMe be like taking days, yeah. you know, like weeks. <laughs> we need like a second, third campaign, a marketing yeah. campaign, Your promotion campaign push. to go out for that. <laughs> These two motherfuckers right here, Eddie and Sean, mm-hmm. y'all contributed the most. The most. Yeah. Yep. Sean. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. You know, and then I want to I want to talk about Sean's contribution, which was <laughs> it was three thousand three hundred and forty five dollars, which is thirty three forty five. Right. Thirty three RPMs, forty five RPMs. RPMs. Oh, that was yeah. your that was donation. Some clever shit, oh, man. Yeah, that, yeah. that was yeah. that was sick. And right? then, this is the beautiful thing about Sean's donation. <laughs> <laughs> I had to so tell you do Eddie. Fucking guy. You to tell us what happened. No, I mean, I saw <laughs> what Eddie gave, and I'm like, you, you wanted to do better? Like you didn't see I what I, you waited. My you, you, you waited to see what I was getting. <laughs> didn't you hold on? <laughs> wait, wait, let me, let me, let me say, yeah. for a minute. So, like, Eddie put down, like, the largest contribution was just, like, 3K. Yeah. And then, you know, Sean's on the, on the cut. He's just low-key spot. He's like, He's just right. waiting. But, but it was also right before we hit the goal. So I was waiting until we got close to the goal. Yeah. Well, but you, you said. And then you wanted to top Eddie. You, that was your yeah. main thing. Yeah, I had to. You had to be the biggest dog. <laughs> yeah. Was but you sent, that, you sent the <laughs> screenshot. A couple bottles. Uh, I, was t- I, was trying, I was trying to, like, throw it back at you because he, you had sent a, in, the, in one of our group chats a, a screenshot of something that Nicole had said, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose it if, if it hits four. Forty-five thousand on a fr- on Friday. Right. So yeah. I was literally pushing to stay. Like yeah. I, like ten o'clock is the new three a.m. for me. So I'm like pushing. I'm like at midnight. I'm gonna contribute the difference to bring it right to forty-five thousand. Right. Uh, yeah. Right at midnight on Friday morning, and be like, Hey, Sean. <laughs> Right, right, right here, I got right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right here, I got you. But you know, the forty-five on a Friday, I, that was that was always a beautiful thing. I never Twitch yeah. stream. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was actually yes. what you guys. That was one of the things that uh, you guys did on Twitch. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. that yeah. translated to real life. Well, mm-hmm. It was one of yeah. those things where it was like, oh shit, these guys are playing vinyl forty-five on a Friday. Yeah, shot to John Petty. John Petty saw it. He's like, "Oh, we want, yeah. yo, let's bring that to Gatsby. Let's yeah. mm-hmm. bring that to life." But mm-hmm. it was it was on trend with a lot of the things that's happening right now. And yeah. it's one of the reasons why Anderson Pack and you are working together as well. I feel like there was this synergy of the vinyl and the music and everything that led to on the record and the vinyl room. And you you had, well you were doing vinyl since you know, way back with intrigue and everything. But yeah. Yeah, at that time, it was just like a great synergy of what was happening at the time. Yeah, no, it was beautiful, man. He, I think he was doing, I think he did a, a few installations of it, a few shows, and then called me and asked me, and it was great. He got me out of the house, you know, uh, for a few hours during the shutdown, and we would kind of, you know, have some drinks, order some food yeah. afterwards, and, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, got to engage with Marion and everybody yeah. in the chat. It was, yeah. it was it was, beautiful. It was a lot of fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. We'd have some fun. guests come over. I think, you know, Mel Starr pulled up one day. And yeah. Then, and yeah. Mel just posted that video. It's so, it's so cool, man. Never was just like, we been, we had a couple of cocktails in us, but never was like, yo, I can't believe this motherfucker's at my house. He's one of, <laughs> he's one of the baddest motherfuckers to ever do it. And he's playing records on my turntables at my house. <laughs> it was yes, amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, I'm so thankful yeah. for that. And and that was it. Like you know, we yeah. had more plans to to do um, more stuff. Like there's a lot of vinyl stuff coming up that we were looking forward to doing. Yeah. And, yeah. and doing some 45 on a Friday live type things, and uh, even do some more back at his house just as a little reunion yeah. on Twitch and stuff. You know, wow. so that was that was always a lot of fun. Always a lot of fun. Yeah, I never figured when he came up with the name. I was staying with him during the pandemic, and he was like, "What should I do?" What should we call this? I just want to play 45s. I'm like, well, 45 starts with an F. So what, you know, just put it on a Friday. He's like, 45s on a Friday. I was like, there you go. And then the two-step on Sunday. I'm like, you have the S on the step. So, you know, put it on on Sunday. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to play all the records that I would hear my mom play in my early years. And that's why he would play all those stuff on Sunday Mm -hmm. because it was two-step. And one thing that he loved 
and he was he was always telling me, should I play this song? Should I play it? It was uh, R. Kelly, Step in the Name of Love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, Because yes, you guys' yes. mom loved that, that record. That's yeah. right. That yeah. was the song. Yeah. So that's where the two-step came uh-huh. because of the, the song and stuff step like in, that. Yeah. Step yeah. in the Name of Love. And, uh, and I remember I'm like, well, just put it on a Sunday. He's like, yeah, it would be like church, right? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so it was, I remember him coming up with those names and, and how they stuck and how they just became a thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I was always actually jealous when uh, you guys were DJing because you guys had so much fun. So yeah, and I mean I just, that's yeah, that's on Twitch, that's off Twitch. I mean yeah, that yeah. was just, I mean I never had so much fun playing. I, with I anybody couldn't, I could never have that much fun on Twitch. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I, did, yeah. I did not enjoy that process. But I really, I really liked um, the shows you guys had on. Oh my Sunday god, <laughs> <laughs> the, the battles, the verses, the battles, oh my god. the battles. Yeah. Those are great. That was, yeah. so and I would always tell yeah. them. Do this one against this one and yeah. this one against this one. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Those yeah. were fun. Those were fun. Those were so much did. work. It was a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have fun. I was like, yeah. it, for me, it was like a production with like that. C- it was like a TV show. The artwork. It was a, like, mm-hmm. it was a lot of shit. It's just, we were doing it, just trying to keep up with times and stuff. And we were like, at the end, we were like, uh, just too exhausting. But then that's when uh, Never branched out and he, he did his own Twitch and stuff yeah. like that. I remember he even went, I think it was, uh, he told me to take him to Best Buy. And we met up with Eddie. And oh, he with bought, the laptop? Uh, he, he bought PC. a laptop for like $3,000. And he's like, this better be worth it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we wanted to get PCs because yeah, he you had to get a PC. Better, yeah. uh, better video cards and stuff. Yeah. They were just oh, built yeah, better for the streaming. Yeah, 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 yeah we, we went, yeah. 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 Oh man! Yeah. That, and that's yeah. when I finally met Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I was like, "Well, who's this guy?" Yeah, all yeah. of a sudden, and, I was like, and he said to me, "He said he's an old, old friend." He did. Yeah. He did tell me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah. Evans really never talked about, you know, um, who he was working with or things like that. He always talked about the parties he did. You know, like I said, he was a quiet. Storm, you know, yeah. he, was, he was really like undercover, you know. Only reason I knew when I came out here, I met you because I he right. never mentioned you before that, <laughs> you know. But yeah. I knew he had friends, but the friends I knew he had was like from you know, New York, yeah, yeah, from New York, yeah, 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 and Edwin so, and everybody, Frank, yeah, yeah. yeah. Frank, but I knew Edwin, people. Yeah. He's attracted. People were attracted to him. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Always like, and, Always. and that's the thing. I feel like now, you know, when I think about more and more. I'm always focused on work, mm-hmm. you know, and especially I think more when I came to Vegas, there's so many distractions here in Vegas right. that I just focused on work because right. I saw every like. So whenever I even to this day, I was told never, you know, like we we've lived in Vegas for so long, but we don't know how to live in Vegas. Mm-hmm. We only know how to work in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Right. True. Meaning like we never really lived in the city and enjoyed Right. The city and made it a part of our identity. Right. But I think that's why I always wanted him with me. Right. Because right. when he was with me, like, yeah, we shared the the workload and the pain, but it was always more fun. Right. Yeah. Right. And then always. we and I was always able to laugh at. We could laugh at. Me and Lever could laugh at anything. Yeah. Like really, like you were around. I uh, really some morbid. Dark yeah, I can imagine. Dark shit. Yeah. Evans, Evans liked to laugh at. Yeah, he was. He a had laugh. dark humor. Dark he could, humor. Yeah, yeah. He could make his own self laugh. You know. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah like Evans. we would have the worst pain or like worst situation ever, and we and I would walk into situations. I'm like, why are you guys speaking about this type yeah, of shit? Yeah. It's like, what's funny? I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. All right, yeah. guys. You say, Lord Jesus. Lord, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Lord <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It's it's funny because uh, even even during the hospital when we were going through the hospital thing, uh, and it was so draining. Yes, it was. And I and and you know, Sean, you were driving from L.A. Yeah. And you would he would come in and every week stay for a couple of days and and you know we'd be in the hospital and we'd be hoping and praying that we get some good news and whatnot. And I think one day we were so drained we were like, yo, like I was like Sean. You know, let's go for like let's go to the steam room and let's let's try to relax. And okay. you know, we went to the steam room and Ooh. we were like, should we? Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's real intimate right now. <laughs> Yo, 
<laughs> and then so like we're going to steam room and we're sitting in the steam room and we're like oh, well, let's get some like you know let's get some beers or let's get some in the some, steam yeah, room yeah so we're That's like very proper and then the whole time we're like Neville would want us to do this yes you know? like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sound out of the ordinary. Yeah, yeah. yeah he would have liked that. But yeah. for me, never to me is also that guy that's like he he always uh, like if I ever wanted to indulge in anything. Yeah, he was your support. He was always down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was always down to have fun and indulge. So if I was mm. like if I hit him up at one a.m. and I was like, yo, like you want to go out? Let's go out. Oh. You know. And he's just like, fuck it. Fuck yeah. 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 That, that was the key him. word. That was him. That that and the other yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, he'd hit me up at four a.m. and be like, "Yo, want to get some burgers?" Like, yeah. yeah. That's uh, too. When, and I'd be yeah. like, "Fuck it, let's go." Yeah. You know, yeah. when I was yeah. when I was staying with him, he would wake up randomly and he'd yes. be like, and "Yo." Fuku burger? I'm like, yeah. sure, let's go. Yeah. But he would like just always, always wanted to do something fun. And it was never like, he never took it too serious. He never took it too. Right. It was always like, yo, you down for this? Yo, I really want some boiling crab. And we'll go get the Fuck boiling it. crab. Fuck it. And we'll end up at the boiling crab. But he was always down. He never, not, like, never let you down to be alone. Like he always went through everything with you he would stand by your side now it's the now it's like you know that's that's the 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 moniker right now. that's the model where we say like never would want us to do never this. would want yeah. this. we just we would just we would just with alex our editor and he we, we were just like yo should we get chengdu like should like, we yeah. eat and we're like said, never, never would want, want us to do it. yeah yeah that's why i called you asked you was we going to eat yeah never would have wanted well, yeah eat. that's right <laughs> I'm telling you, all our listeners out there, if y'all want to, you know what I'm saying? If y'all if want you're to, requesting something, yeah. you need a little want, push in life. Y'all want like an extra shot or something, just put it up in there and be like, yo, never would want yeah. you to do yeah. that. Yeah. If he was there, he would do that shot with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every time. There's one thing that actually that we need to address mm-hmm. that, you know, that Sean actually was what brought up to me is that. Never, like, you know, like I said, he inspired us. He was one of the first DJs to, like, buy his own home that we saw, and it inspired all of us. But, you know, he he was actually breaking a lot of ground because he infiltrated this predominantly white world of, like, bougie, like, bottle service, you know, high-end hospitality Mm -hmm. at the time. And especially in the 2000s, there was this trend of just, like, you know, just DJs like Mark Ronson and like AM and all of these very talented like white DJs like like dominating the scene mm-hmm. from New York, LA, and, and and everywhere. But you know, Sean, like you know, tell us more about what you were talking about when you guys started at Jet. I think you said it was you stretch. It was you stretch. Yeah, I think and Stretch Neva. was doing Tuesdays. Never was doing Fridays. I was doing Saturdays. Okay, uh, so that's like yeah, a perfect yeah. example right there. It was two white guys, Never. Um, but yeah, like he was the guy that Mark would call to cover for him the Hamptons. And yeah. I'm like, Mark was like this poster boy, you know, Tommy Hilfiger model doing the hottest parties in New York in the late nineties and early two thousands. And for him to have never cover is just like, that just speaks volumes about the kind of DJ he was and the kind of person he was. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think I ever really appreciated uh, while he was here how difficult it must have been for him to accomplish everything that he did or to even just have the balls and the courage to come out here when he was offered those opportunities because he could have easily stayed back in New York and, you know, just continued that hustle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, um, you know... There's, you know, there's other guys like, you, you know, from similar backgrounds, you know, you have Funk Flex, you know, you have Kid Capri's and, you know, those guys have blown up. But you could also argue that, like, they weren't able to cut into the same bougie bottle spots that say never did because, you know, the owners were afraid that they'd bring an urban crowd or whatever. He kept this low profile and just was so versatile. Right. That. It didn't matter. Right. Well, that was it just, one. Of, it that, didn't matter. That was one of the most interesting things about Neva is that mm-hmm. his his catalog of music was was very vast, from soup to nuts, from soup to nuts. <clears throat> and so, the, and then we've had conversations about this: is that he was so in love with not only R and B, soul, funk, but he was on top of all the '80s new wave. Yeah. 
the rock and roll. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's really what set him apart was that he was able to like play for white people. Yeah. And but also inject all this soul and hip hop and edge and just know like the perfect, you know, even to this day, Jamie, when we when we see him rock up, rock the sets, Mm -hmm. he Jamie even tells me to this day. Yeah. 2023. He's like. No one could rock a white room like never. Yeah, he knew. Like, how, he knew exactly what the white folks wanted. Yeah. <laughs> and I was sit, even I sucked at that. I, I really struggled with that at a point. And I would just sit there. So I would like DJ from seven to eleven, and he was from ten to two. But we were right next door to each other. So I would go and sit right behind him, and I'd be like, "Oh, he's playing this Justin Timberlake song. Oh, he's playing this. Oh, he's playing that." And then I'll be like, yo, can you send me those records? He's like, yeah, of course. Vice versa. He would like text me and be like, yo, what's the new hottest Mexican song or whatever. Yeah, right, and then I'll right. do the same thing. But I was always had to like sit behind him and just take notes. And then he it would always like struck me when I would play a record. And then he's like, yo, remember what a party at by Jagged Edge? I said, I was like, yeah, I drop it all the time. He's like, because I heard you play it. Now I'm playing it and it's working. And that was a proud moment because I'm like, oh, he's getting something from me back. Right. But I was, the white sets were just impeccable. And I wish I knew his <laughs> <Yeah>. folder <laughs> because it, it was just a, like 90% of white people. And there's this black dude just making them all dance for four or five hours. I'm like, dude, you got him in the palm of your hand. Like, I don't know how many years it took you to master this. But I remember Cricket telling me, he's like, you want to learn how to rock a white crowd? Go see Never. And I yeah. was like, yeah. Never. I mean, when he started out, he was rocking the white crowd in New York City at mm-hmm. times, yeah. too. You know? So I think with him, because he was so versatile and he was so, he was so such a gentle person mm-hmm. that um, he was able to, I wouldn't say penetrate, but to be around everybody. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Lord but it was, like, it was just effortless. Because yeah, yeah. Honestly, effortless. like, honestly, yeah. these people, he was just so laid back and cool. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, he just slow. he was just invited. Yeah, yeah. And he was just part of like, yo, like, yo, never come back, come back, you know? And he was just easy to work with. Mm-hmm. He was an easy going guy. Easy. I, I, yeah. I give easy. my mother credit for that because she raised us to love everybody. Yeah. To love all music. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, we didn't just listen to R and B and soul. She loved Broadway, Broadway. music, operas. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. she opened up a door for us, you know, to that we can be around anyone and anybody and we don't feel lesser or better or you know, it's just a love for everyone, you right. know. And I think Evans had that more because he was around all of us women, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. he's kind of like all ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was kind of like the the baby, you know. He's the and, baby, and yeah. Yeah, he was the baby, but yeah, he was a gentle guy. Gentle no, and guy. I will say, like, <clears throat> never really knew how to play for ladies. Mm, so I remember at his um his his lime green part, his lime yellow party yeah. at light. Party. Uh, all of us female DJs, we all rolled as a crew, so we were all hanging out. And when Neva went on. He was just playing like back to back, like a 2000s like lady set, mm-hmm. and we all looked at each other. And we're like, "Oh, he's playing for the women right now." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, like he mm-hmm. really knew how to play. He just for knew women. how to read a room too. Yeah. Just like yeah, literally 20, 30 years of just like learning to read a room. Yeah, and then not only that, I feel like you know, like he he never like put a limit on what was good music or bad music. Right. Right. That was the greatest. Oh shit. yeah, that was great. Because like we would be listening to like house and be like, "Oh, I know that shit." And he like, yeah, you're like, you know, and, and even w- when you would work with him, like he was like kind of the hip hop DJ and you were like the house DJ at the time. Yeah, right? we, I mean, we definitely fed off of each other and, and yeah. learned off of each other. Like when he had to go do it, I forget, uh, I was running um, a record store on the east side, east third, uh, beyond bass. <laughs> he hit me, he's like, yo, I need some, uh, I need some hot house records right now. And he came to be on bass, you know, um, I loaded him up with the Armand Van Helden. He's mentioned all this on the pod, Mojo yeah. lady music sounds better with you. Kings of tomorrow. Finally, mm-hmm. all this stuff. And they, they were all like big Hamptons. Like he would hear me playing, play him in the Hamptons right. and he would use them for his glo- cl- uh, gigs when he would go back to Manhattan and vice versa. I learned so much about, you know, weaving in and out of different genres, having it all make sense and not being afraid. Like I, I never, I never, 
heard like back in black at a, in a club setting or anything like that or sweet home alabama and all that stuff yeah. and that, and that was yeah. this is ni- the 90s, 90s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. but it carried through it was because of everything i learned from him that made sense in vegas because when we moved to vegas we were very deep into that mashup world that mashup era of music you know everything I mean, was they a, labeled it mashup it was it, yeah, yeah but it yeah. was it was honestly just new york style of djing yeah, in yeah vegas. i mean stretch was stretch was you know big on on that sound he was right. doing a lot of that stuff and you know i know never was influenced by him and as well and stuff like that but i learned so much and i wouldn't i wouldn't have gotten i wouldn't have landed that gig if i didn't use the pointers of watching never dj all those years in the hamptons i wouldn't have had the tools to know what they were looking for oh yeah you're playing house but what else you do i'm like oh okay well we're gonna do this then it's like okay we need you out here you want to move and i moved out two weeks later and then he was he wasn't far behind but that but that's the that's the really the most important thing because like even even in the late 90s and 2000s and like sean i don't know if you remember this but like i remember there was like k capri was like one of the first hip-hop djs Mm -hmm. at that time of what i knew that played, I think he played Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit at a set. Mm-hmm. And we were just like, holy shit. I didn't know you could play rock music at a fucking a hip hop party. Mm-hmm. And we thought it was groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. And then I would, I heard like never later on, I'm like, yo, he's playing Bon Jovi. Mm-hmm. He playing every, he playing the cars. Mm-hmm. He's playing Depeche Mode. He's doing fucking everything. Fucking go, go-go's and go-go's. everything. Yeah. Go-go's. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then, you know, he's navigating CDs with vinyl and, and like, and I was just like, yo, this is fucking nuts. And like, yo, this is like, fuck, like, you like, don't disrespect the kid Capri, but I was like, he's just playing one rock record. And we were like amazed over that shit. Mm-hmm. And never was doing that probably years yeah. before that, mm-hmm. before I heard him. I think it was just crazy how he was able to just always adapt too and just mm-hmm. stay versatile and adapt. Even with Serato, he mm-hmm. was very open to it. Mm-hmm. And when a lot of DJs in his generation were like, now nah, I'm gonna stick with vinyl. Right, he was right, just like, right. when I remember I was just like, yo, get this laptop, get, and he was open to it. I, yeah. I don't know if you guys got Serato around the same time. I was a little, I was, yeah, I start my first time on Serato, I was still at Foundation Room. So I was on like, it had to be 2004, I wanna say. It was pretty, pretty early. Yeah, yeah. Pretty early, and I would, but I would always have, <clears throat> I would still bring records out. I mean, Usher was still pot, like a, a big, big one, but it was still yeah. around then. Mm-hmm. So sure. I would have a CD. We all, I think we all did it. That backup CD. If your shit crashed, you got a bomb like ready to go on the CD player. Yeah, so yeah. it would be like Usher, and you know, I just want to love you, Jay Z, or mm-hmm. something like that at the time, whatever it was, and you know, as your uh, as your backup plan. But yeah, I mean, we were pretty early with it. All yeah, of us, I even think, to the, uh, even to this know. day, and I've said it multiple times on the podcast that I think never just continuously got better and better and I think he could still hold the room down every time when a lot of DJs his age they they're they're semi phased out mm-hmm. a lot of them can't hold down a high energy <coughs> club room right. the way he can till with like East too. even still to, to his to his last day of major accomplishment you know what I'm saying yeah. of fucking okay. DJing he was holding down because he prepped for room. all of his gigs I mean for hours yeah, yeah. Before, Even when he came to New York. before he, yeah. you know, went to his gig, and he would yeah. sit in the office and just, you know, pull out music and look at this and look at that, and then sometimes he would get on his turntables just to hear how things sounded and everything else. So it was a, truly a craft to him that he, you know, spent a lot of time at. It was something he cared about a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even when he came to see me in New York, he. Um, he would have all his his whatever to, with the laptop or whatever, and he'd go into the basement and he'd be like, "I gotta listen to my, you know, listen to this. I gotta listen to this. You know, I gotta get this set right." So he was always working, even yeah. even when he was supposed to be on vacation. He'd take that time out just to do his music. I'll give you my favorite story from him. It's like you were saying how he was our good luck charm. Um, I just felt like any time I hit him up to go out in New York, it was just going to be the illest night. <laughs> because, <laughs> like you said, all the security knew him. But like, even, This is when he would like fly back from Vegas and visit you in New York, right? Yeah. Or if I had already moved out, we would both like time it so we'd be back for the holidays or whatever. But this is when I still lived there. So, um, But like you said, all the security knew him, the club owners... You name it, right? They wouldn't be giving me the time of day. So, <laughs> but um, I got when the uh, so it was Prince's last concert at the Garden. This was like 2011, I think. Mm. And um, 
but I got wind that he was going to do like, uh, some of you guys know this story already. I got wind that he was going to do like this private show at the Derby after the garden and the Derby. I'm sure most of you guys know it was the old Nels on 14th street. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. like a tiny, tiny yeah, ass tiny little place. hole in the wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, which is where you want to see Prince. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, intimate. Yeah, exactly. It's like 200 people or whatever. So I hit up Neva. I'm like, yo, because I just know like somehow we're going to freak it. So I was like, yo, Neva, let's just pull up. Like, fuck it. Like, I, like if we don't get in, we don't get in, whatever. So we get down there. It must have been like 11, like pretty early. And it's just like a mob scene outside. So I'm like looking at him. I'm just like, yo, just I think we got to like go to this dive bar just mm-hmm. <laughs> around the corner and just call it quits. And just as I'm like telling him this, this like security guard. Now, whether it was an OG security guard or just like they thought never was somebody he's he wasn't like Russell Simmons or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they pointed it. They pointed to never. And they're like, yo, how long you been waiting out here for? Yeah. And Neva's like, got this look on his face <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, yo, just like five, ten minutes. And the guy like parts the seas. And it's like all like, you know, beautiful women just like dying to get in there. And he just like whistles past the ropes and we get inside and I get to the bar with Neva and it's packed in there. And I'm like, all right, what are we drinking? Like, I got this drink. And I'm like, yo, who the fuck was that outside? And he's like, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know how many spots he got into because they thought he was Russell Simmons? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. But I was like, maybe it was, maybe he knew him from back in the day. I don't know. But I, this security guy looked kind of young from what yeah, I remember. Yeah. So like, no, no, like we used to call him Young Russell. Yeah. yeah. Young Russell. And then I remember there was a time the because the, we always, DJs, we always befriend the, the security guys, right? The security uh-huh. guys always love us, but he was in the Hamptons. And he was with like the crew of security because we always just hung out. Right. So imagine Neva with like four, like six foot five, like motherfuckers dressed in all black. Right. Yeah. And they're just hanging out. And there's this this party in the Hamptons they can't get in. And obviously just the image of Neva with four security guys. <laughs> They, the guy just instantly opens the rope. He's like, come on. <laughs> and, he, and he was like, he was like, Russell, Russell, yeah. come on. <laughs> and then the security dudes were like, oh, okay, let's just play along. And they were like parting the ways. Yeah. And then Neville was just like, yo, thanks. And he was putting his hat a little lower. And he was just sitting there walking in. <laughs> and they just stood around him and everyone the whole night just thought it was Russell Simmons. Oh, God, and man. I don't even see him looking like Russell Simmons. <laughs> no, no, <he's> <laughs> saw that. Yeah, yeah. They just saw like a light-skinned brother over yeah. there. Yeah, with yeah, a ball, yeah, head. ball head. Yeah, yeah. In New York, huh? Right, yeah, yeah, New York, right, yeah. Right, right. Wearing like Ralph Lauren shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, like yes, the fat farm true. style. That, yeah. like, said, Why is that yeah. guy sitting in a yoga yeah. pose? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, like, there's like, there was so many stories when like, never were first moved to Vegas, and he would just come visit us in New York, and we would just wild, he would just wild the fuck out in New York, and we had like all these memories, right? Oh man, the best! Like, there's no one else I wanted to go out with. He was he was always my plus one at like any like dope event that I knew would was going down. I was like, I got to invite him, like. Well, another memory I had uh, was, do you remember these birthday parties Cassidy would throw? Yeah, were huge. Yeah, DJ Cassidy. In the, so two, he, in the 2000s, when he was at his highest peak era, yeah. there was a DJ, uh, Cassidy, and he would have these star-studded birthday parties like Belba DeVoe would perform. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Some weird shit, So right? this one was like 2009, I think. And he rented out the Midtown Public Library, crazy. which is crazy. Wow. wow. Yeah. But I remember... The lineup was like Rakim, Bobby Brown, Flex was DJing, just like Heavy D was there, Jay-Z, not like, and I was like, yo, I have a plus one. There's only one person I'm taking. Yeah. Right, right. There's only one, like, I can't think about any, like, I love y'all, but I'm not taking Because <laughs> never was the culture. Right, I knew right, that, right. like, no one would appreciate it yes. more. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. And man, do we have, we had a little too much fun. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because we got in and it was like a Belvedere open bar. And oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was a wrap after that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I haven't heard a Belvedere open. I know, in like so long. Belvedere. <laughs> you know, it was like 2007. Is gold well, this was, two th- this was 2009. They had, to, Beer, they had to pay for the talent somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like yeah. <laughs> fucking Belvedere when Belvedere was popping. Yeah. 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 This is pre Sarai. Yeah. It was great. Gray Goose yeah. and Belvedere. Yeah, yeah Gray Goose and Belvedere. Belvedere. Yeah. Belvedere. Yeah. Either one. It's crazy this, this, this tie that never has between. New York and Vegas, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, the Bronx and Las Vegas. Um, and it's, uh, you know, we had uh, the funeral services in, in New York. And, uh, you know, me and Eddie, when we, we were talking about, you know, the, the New York funeral services, I remember actually like the funeral services that you originally were going to have were, was going to be on a Friday. And then it was, and I was like, and I, you know, at first I was like, oh, okay, so we won't be able to make it. Cause we all have to work. And I was like, you know, we'll, we'll just double down. We'll do a Las Vegas service. And then thankfully y'all changed it to Monday. So like, cause you know, every, every DJ in the world is working on a Friday yeah. and then, you know, for us to fly to New York, it would have been hard, but I know there was like rain scheduled uh, yeah. on, on the Monday. <clears throat> yeah. And then, uh, so, but then I was just like, man, I don't want the rain, you know, to mess up the funeral. So, but I was like, you know, we'll double down on this Vegas memorial and that, that'll be our way of saying goodbye. But I remember, I think I, I just couldn't live with myself. I, I was like at home and I couldn't sleep. Mm-hmm. And I think I was like, you know, I didn't want to like interrupt what your family wanted to do, you know. So but I think, I, you know, and I, I, I appreciate you guys changing the date mm-hmm. uh, yeah. to Monday so we could all come through. And um, and, you know, and luckily it was like. One of the most beautiful, beautiful days. days. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah, such a beautiful. beautiful. And, and I really felt like his presence yeah. that day, especially when we went to the burial. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just was. I yeah. felt like it was such a blessing to be there, okay. and it was the and you know it was just such a. It was the sun was just shining right on that hill that yes, he was on. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. And I'll never forget it. And the feeling I had, uh, I, I can't even explain that feeling. It yeah. was. It was. It was holy. It was. I, I don't spiritual. I don't know how to explain it. It was spiritual. It was spiritual. It was a spiritual. But mm-hmm. I, I I really I'm so thankful that you guys flew out to Vegas for this memorial that we're gonna have, you know, this week. And I think it's like I you know, I, I, I feel like uh I don't know if you've really seen what the impact that never had in Vegas is. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I really want you guys to see no. I want you to see it tomorrow. Yeah. And um and, and and also we're we're gonna have like this kind of like live interview podcast. We're gonna ask everyone that shows up, uh, you know, a couple of questions. And uh, one of the questions that I that I thought was, that I was thinking about this the whole time, you know, like I want people to share stories. Like, what's your favorite moment with Neva? And, and then I thought there was this one important one. I was like, if you could talk to Neva right now, what would you tell Neva right now? And. I, I kind of, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to be at that event and be interviewed, but I, I'm kind of curious if we, you know, if you could say something to Neville right now, what would you tell him? I love you. Mm. I miss you. I miss your laughter. I want you back. <laughs> Let you know. He's not going to come back. Didn't want him to go. Um, to your point that, you know, he was really kind of quiet and reserved, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would just say I wish for me that he had said something sooner, mm. you know, rather than later, you know, maybe it would be different. I'm like, for me, it was just like... um I would just say I wish you had said something sooner, you know, um, when you were poo-pooing it, thinking it was a flu or something else. Right. Um, and, you know, as Scene says, you know, it was complete shock. You know, I wish he was still here um, and that we would just, you know, laugh about him being in the hospital and how he sucked up so much of everybody's time. <laughs> 
every day being there, you know, and just to get on him about that and just to hear him, you know, um, get after me one more time. Like he would, you know, if we were riding in the car and listening to music, like I like, you know, to some artists do reprises of songs and he would always say, you couldn't afford the rest of the song from iTunes, you know, something like that. You know, you hear a minute of the snippet of the song. He's like, what, you couldn't afford the rest of the song? <laughs> I just wish he was still here. Like, like you guys said, he and I would go to restaurants and it didn't matter where we went, somebody would know him. You know, they'd come to the table and they'd, I'm like, we're in Lotus of Siam, you know, and somebody random was like, oh, what's up, blah, 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 you know, so. And he started getting more famous because of the podcast, yeah. too. He was yeah. Telling me, <laughs> yeah. Are you never from Road, Road Podcast? Yeah. 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 He loved it. He loved that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said sure he didn't, but he did. But he did. Yeah, yeah, he did. And just, you know, all the, all the things and times and funny things things we've lived with him are always going to be held in my heart but i just wish he'd said something sooner and i wish he was still here you know but but also marion i hope that doesn't just weigh weigh on you and 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 hold you down you know what i mean because i feel like you know i just don't want that to wait on you you know I, what i mean right. i know it's hard but for me it's just really it's just really hard, and um, I know. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's to me. He was also very stubborn. Yeah. Yes, some, he was. Yeah. And to a fault, and you know, that's one of the things when I was in the hospital. I I loved him so much. You know, I was mad at him. You yeah. know, I was mad at him. And it's hard because yeah. you know it's like, why why'd you do this to yourself? Yeah. Why you did this? Why you have why you have me here right here like this right now? Yeah. You know? And I'm like, and you know I love you and I'm gonna be here. Mm -hmm. Like there's no doubt about that. Yeah. There's no fucking question about that. Why you did this? You yeah. know, why are you making it hard? Why do we have to do this the hard way? Because he was stubborn. Yeah. You know, really stubborn. But, you know, I think for me, I'm just gonna always hold and I think about every day you know all the fun times we've all had with him and I know mm. Mm. to Sean's you know point he was always my plus one too <laughs> you know I always like I went to when I worked at the Met Museum I had an opportunity to go to the Met Gala and you know he he was my plus one and it was him with the tuxedo and <laughs> getting cufflinks and it was so much traffic I on Fifth Avenue that. Um, we had to jump out. He didn't want to be late. He was like, we're just going to jump out the cab and walk down Fifth Avenue. I'm like, I'm not walking down Fifth Avenue. Um, <laughs> we'll just get there when we get there. And it, yeah. it was the one with um, when they had, it was the Costume Institute owed to um, rock and roll. So they had like Prince's outfit, Michael Jackson's outfit. And it's funny because we were hanging out with Russell Simmons and Kamora <laughs> Lee. Oh my God. <laughs> because they were there. Yeah. He never said that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he, he was always my plus one too, too. If, if I had something that fell into my lap on a hum or something, he was my plus one. Yeah. yeah. And the Met Gala, he was just so excited about and that was a long time ago but yeah yeah i feel you on the whole mad at you <laughs> yeah yeah um but we had a lot of conversations august i i think back to when i was at the house in august when we went to the hip-hop concert in august where he was just like you want to go and i'm like I was just coming over to visit you and mommy, but you know, if you're gonna pay for it, yeah, I'm going. I'm going. Let's go. That was the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. of the stadium. Yeah, that was random. his last concert. Yeah, very yeah. random. Yeah, and we were actually he supposed loved to that. go. He loved that. We were originally supposed to go to a barbecue somewhere on the Grand Concourse to mm. celebrate the 50 years of hip hop. That was free. Mm. And then he's like, "But you know, Yankee Stadium has that concert," and I'm like, um, "I was going to the free barbecue." And he's like, "You want to go?" And I'm like. Okay. Um, he even wanted me to go. Yeah. <laughs> but um, 
But yeah, but he was he was he was that person. He was he was my cheerleader. He was my, you know, my safety net. Um and yes, I'm still shattered. Yeah. But yeah. I can hear him say, Nicole, don't be sad, don't be crying, go eat something, you know, <laughs> go shopping, buy something, you know, live life. And um and he was gonna live his life, and he lived his life. Yeah. And he would want us to do the same, but I could just tell him, I, I already know, he would be like, stop crying, you know, it's all good, you know? So, I'm, I'm literally always saying, like, I know, it's all good, mm. all good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Neva's omnipresent in my thoughts, you know? I mean, it's, it's hard to even come to grips with it, but I mean, <clears throat> you know, to, to your point with, with, you know, you know, why did it have to get to this? You know, he never wanted to impose. He, he never wanted to mm-hmm. be in a, in position. And the thing is, what he never realized, it was, he could never be. He could never, he could he could never, never impose. Be, yeah. the, the man was just the most mild-mannered, genuine, beautiful guy. Yeah. And, you know, even, you know, we were just even with like some work shit, you know, we were going through some accounting stuff with somebody that used to work for the, con- the company. <laughs> And I'm, and he told me how much money he was owed. I'm like never. What? He's like, I don't want to bother you. I'm like never. You yeah. earn the money. I don't want this money in our account. I said never. You have to pick up the phone. And plus, it's me. I'm a like, bro. Pick up the phone. Like don't even think about it. You know. But he never wanted to be that guy. But he never was. And I don't. Know, and I don't think he realized it. Like, dude, we'll, we we will bend over backwards for you. The people that were here in the rough times while you were in the hospital, we were always here for you. Yeah. And we're always, you know, always open line of communications. And yeah, I'm, I'm regretful that it, it had gotten to this. But, yeah. you know, but I'm so thankful for uh, getting to experience his energy and his friendship. And uh, and I would just say, Nevi, 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 I miss you. And uh, and thank you for, for so much. So, and love you. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Yeah. What I what, what I could say to him? I mean, if you could, if you you know, he's listening. If you could talk to him, if you could say something to him right now, you know. I found an old phone of mine, and I was going through it last night, and I sent him a text in 2018. I think it was just a shitty year for me, and I was coming because I was living in California, and I was coming to hustle gigs for you. You were just getting me, you know, some random ones. But I just sent him this text like, yo, happy New Year's. Uh, Just wanted to say thank you so much for giving me a place to stay this year when I came to Hustle Gigs. It's really true what they say. Hard times will always reveal true friends. And he was that guy. Like, he was just always there. Um... And then he just he replied, "Stop getting soft on me." (laughs) (laughs) So I'm sure he's saying that right now. Yeah, yeah. But I know I will never meet anyone like him again. He was that special. Yeah. Uh, Jamie. Fuck. (laughs) Um. Well, you know, thank you. Um, for everything, from texting Eddie that I need to work out here, just housing me when I needed somewhere to stay. Yeah, I mean, I, let me just say I don't mean to interrupt you, but Never has helped so many yeah. DJs, so many people. Yeah, and I'm, then he's never asked for shit. He's never been like, never. yo, like, remember I did this shit for you. Like, he never held it out, over your head. He's looked out for me. He's looked out for everyone in this fucking room. Yeah, I'm sure. And he's out done of jail. it. And he, you know. <laughs> and Shit. others. I read on Instagram. Oh, Lord. You, another one of those texts I found, he was like, I feel like I'm running a halfway house over here. <laughs> <laughs> this is his time. You stayed at his house. Everybody Everyone stayed. stayed at his house at some point. 
<laughs> and even on Instagram, I don't know who some people were saying thank you for letting me stay with nope. you. I yeah. was like, uh, oh man, he, 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 he was out for real. Yeah, I read all the Instagrams and people like he had a big heart. He always yeah. looked yeah. out. A lot of people. He always looked out. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's funny because I found the text message when he texts me. He's like, hey, I text my boy Eddie Mac. They're opening up a burger spot, and you're gonna be the DJ. And then a Cricket, black tap, yeah, black tap, and Cricket goes, "Oh, he's gonna be DJ in Burger Heaven." <laughs> and then you guys just started cracking on me and stuff like that. And I was just so happy to be DJ at a burger spot, <laughs> even though it was not a, like a high end nightclub. But to me, it was work. It was in the pay the bills, and and I I'll never forget that. And even when I needed a place to stay or just somebody there. Like, if I run into some type of problem, like, he had my back. Like, he had, like, every time. Mm -hmm. uh, like, if I need, if if I run into a problem at a club or I run into a even DJ or just a life problem, he was always there. He will always answer the phone. Um, sometimes I woke him up and he'll be upset, but nonetheless, like, he was always there. And, and it's, 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 it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was my day-to-day, -day, you know? And we were DJ in a lot of the same venues and a lot of the same places. And sometimes next to each other, I don't know, when he was tired and he was over the night, he'd be like, let's go home. And we would just <clears throat> head home. And we lived two blocks away from each other. So it was just, it's been, it's been difficult, but it just, um, even today, my routine was to always pick them up before recording. Yeah, and I take the same route to pick them up. It sucks that, that it happened the way it happened. It happened so quick, and I really, really just fucking miss my best friend. And it's funny because piggyback off of what Sean said, I think he posted something in the last couple of weeks. And he called him the Jackie Robinson of DJing or something along those lines. Yeah. Mm. And it just everything. And going back to Marty Rock's uh, speech at the funeral, he just broke down barriers for everybody. Before never, uh, a lot of DJs downtown Manhattan didn't look like us. They wasn't Puerto Rican. They wasn't black. They wasn't from the Bronx. Um, but never, never changed that. Uh, never was one of the first uh, minority DJs booked downtown Manhattan at the fashion parties. I'm trying to hold it together. Uh, so I looked at him and I was like, yo, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, I just wanted to thank you, bro, for uh, uh, giving people like me a platform, bro. Um, because of people like you, I'm able to do what I do for a living and support my family. He was the cowboy that went over the hill first, and yeah. and he, he, he helped everybody get put on, and it was just the genuineness humans. Yeah, he, I mean, he made it, he made it, he made... Every minority feel like we could we could make it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a lot of minority DJs, we were like, "Yo, are we gonna make it?" And yeah, like, yo, and he made it. And we're like, "Yo, you like a minor? You a, a black DJ in Vegas?" Yeah, and he's DJing, high in nightclubs. You know? It's just like it was unheard of. It was like the people's champ. Like, oh, he did it. Anybody could do it. And yeah. it was just like Sean's just been saying these things where I'm like. Man, it just goes over people's heads of what he's done. Yeah. Even like yeah. being part of this podcast, the little gems that he would drop here and there, the funny moments. And it's funny because the f we I, 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 after he passed, I sat back and I was like, man, his my whole friendship with him is documented, which is amazing and it's beautiful. Right. But the foundation of this podcast starts with never coming to Vegas and doing what he did. And then going to Cricket and going to Eddie and going to Sean and going to me, it's just, it all started with him. Like he was the one that knocked the doors down. And it helped us all. And and it just sucks that we'll never, he would tell me, am I going to be DJing until I'm 60, 70? And I would be like, y'all take care of you once <laughs> you don't want to DJ no more. But it was just that thing where it's just like that was, he was just always looking out. He never stopped. Caring, he never stopped loving. He was just, he was just an angel walking around amongst us. Mm -hmm. you yeah, go. you're right. And he, he would take his shirt off his back and give it to you. He'll 
His last meal, he'll share with you and everything. He never held back. I don't know about that last meal. <laughs> no, he did. He did. <laughs> he shared chicken wings with me quite often. But <laughs> he probably didn't want to, though. <laughs> but uh, all in all, I just want to say thank you for everything. I love you. I miss you. Yeah. You're forever my best friend. And, uh, you know, I hope you got the party rocking once we get there. Yeah. And that's it. Word up. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Cricket? I mean, uh, there's a lot of things I would tell him. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I think there was a there was a rough spot with me and Eva mm-hmm. for a couple of years. Um, and I think, you know, all g- good friends who have known each other for decades yeah, go through go it. Go through it, yeah. And, you know, family members go through it. And, you know, I would say I'm sorry that we went through that, but I think it was important that we went through that. And I want to tell him I'm glad we got through it. And I'm glad, you know, we actually got through it because he came through to help me at my at one of my lowest times. Despite the fact that we weren't really tight like we were. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were always tight, but we just weren't talking. And I want to tell him, you know, I'm sorry that we had to go through that, but it did bring us closer together. And it made me realize that, you know, no matter what, I cannot stop loving you. It is vital for my existence on this earth to have you with me. I can't imagine a life without you. So it's important that no matter what happened between us or what will happen in the future or whatever, that I maintain the fact that I love you and I will not stop loving you. And so what I would tell him, and this was my last words to him when we left the hospital, when you guys called me that Sunday and said he passed away, my last words to him when I left was, I'm going to make you proud. And they're going to know who you are, and they're not never going to forget who you are. And I told you that, and that's what I'm telling you now, that we're going to keep this going. People have been asking me, are we going to stop the podcast? We're not going to stop the podcast. Fuck no. Um, we're going to do it for as long as, uh, you know, we can do it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like he says, you know, we just warming up. Yeah, <laughs> yep. we just warming, warming up. You know, and, uh, mm-hmm. and it's, it's just one of those things that, you know, everyone in this room, I feel like we're going to continue to honor you, to celebrate your life. That's right. And, you know, I uh, had this really important conversation with my brother-in-law, my sister's husband. Uh, on my birthday, it was like, you know, during, it was, my birthday happened, uh, it was, he was in the hospital. And, uh, it was, and it's like, and me and Neva always had this thing where we had bad shit happen around our birthday. So he would like not look forward to his birthday and I would like, like not look forward to my birthday because like some shit always happened. But... I had an important conversation with my brother-in-law and I kept looking at it as a loss. And I said, I don't know how I'm gonna live without him. And my brother-in-law texted me and basically said, you know, I don't think you should see it as a loss. I, I think you should see him that he's always with you now. And you should continue to talk with him and speak with him and, you know, and, uh, and have him in your life that he's always surrounded. And ever since he, and, and I was so grateful that he told me that because it completely changed my perspective on everything. Because I was in a place where like, well, how could we have a podcast without him? How could I do this without him? How could I do any of these things without him? And then now I just said, well, he's always with me. And then I started like, you know, when it was a beautiful day and, and the sun was shining and, and I would feel the sun beaming on my face, I'd be like, you know, I was like, that's, it just reminded me that Neva's watching me or Neva's around me. And then, you know, even I was telling Jamie I would be DJing, you know. Everyone was calling me like, you know, when he, the week he passed, they're like, yo, you sure you're going to be able to DJ? Are you sure you'll be able to DJ? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. And like, I'm literally DJing and I'm talking to myself, and I'm, but I'm talking to him. Mm-hmm. I look crazy probably when I was doing it, <laughs> but I'm like, you know, when I'm spinning and I'm like, yo, I'm like, you know, the crowd's going wild and they, they wilding out. I'm like, yo, Nev, we got him. Yeah, we got him, yeah, Nev. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, and I'm yeah, literally yeah, spinning. Yeah. I'm like, yo, Nev, we got them motherfuckers. Yeah, we got yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm talking, you know, yeah. 
and uh, I feel like he's with me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, that's, and that's why I said, like, I'm just going to continue to make you proud because mm-hmm. you're here. And I'm going to move, you know, I'm, I'm moving differently. I'm looking at things differently now. And I'm moving for us. I'm moving so that when, you, when you're watching us, you're going to be like, yo, that's how I want my boys to move. That's how I want them to do. So I'm telling you I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fulfill that promise to the day, you know, to the day I die. And then I can rejoin with you and I see you again. Amen. Yeah. Marion, Seen, Nicole, uh, thank you so much for doing this. I know this isn't easy. I'm, I'm just so grateful. And I think, you know, it, for the time that we spent together, for the time that you have taken to, to speak with us and share Neva's life from his childhood to, to now. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank Sean, Eddie, thank you guys for coming through. And, you know, Jamie, Nudia, Alex, we're going to keep the shit going. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Eddie, Sean, with your help, we're going to keep this shit going. Yeah. Say no more. Of course. And, um, Neva, you're always going to be with us. I'm always going to intro you on every episode. Yep. Yeah. And until we see you next, mm-hmm. right? That's it. All right, y'all. Peace. 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 something to never right now what would you tell him i miss you that's it you're you're always with me thank you for the inspiration thank you for all the knowledge one of the best to ever do it thank you so much for sharing your life with us through music and i need you to rock that party up there for us great man so grateful to have experienced him in this lifetime thank you for always being there for me growing up never was here and i saw him and i walked in it right now i say like anytime i saw him play that shit. I wish we would have gotten to talk about mental health a little longer than we did because I can count with one hand how many people I'm able to like open up to about that. He's inspired me so much. Um, it's not a lot of honestly like African American DJs who does what he does. Hip hop without Neva in Vegas is just something I, I just I can't fathom. I'm just a pioneer in the nightlife industry in Las Vegas for people like myself to continue to do business in this town. Definitely lit up, lit up a cigar for you in, uh, in your honor. Neva, we still have 10 burger spots we need to hit up, but we're going to do that eventually someday. I love you, brother. I would just like to say thank you so much for uh, being such a good dude. One of the most humble DJs that I've ever met. Look how many people are here for you, man. Like, you were really loved. You reached us all the way up in Alaska on behalf of all DJs in small communities. It meant the world to us, so thank you. Thank you for uh, your contributions to the podcast and sharing all the stories. And Your legacy is going to continue on forever through the podcast. We will push your legacy forever. Your legacy is forever cemented about the people that love you. Keep us safe. We love you, Neva. Much love, Neva. We just want to tell you I love you. Much love, man. Miss you. Miss you, man. We love you, Neva. I love you, Neva. Neva, we love you. Rest in peace, Neva forever, y'all. Neva forever. Neva, Black Panda. Cheers, my brother. We miss you. We love you. You'll never be forgotten. It's all love. I want everyone to raise your glasses for DJ Neva. We love you, Neva. We miss you, Neva. Neva forever. Everybody, thank you, Neva. Salute. Salute. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Drinks up, drinks up to DJ Never. Yes, Never would have made it. Please welcome to the stage, my brother, James Williams. You know him as D-Train. Let's go! Let's go! Here we go. What's up, baby? My favorite memory of Neva was recently at a Pioneer uh, demo. I got to bring my daughter in. They just started chit-chatting about their record collection. Very moving for me because it just shows how much of a heart he has. My favorite memory of Neva was when we uh, went to Hawaii. We ate, we drank, got fucked up. We went to North Shore and there was a swing hanging but it looked like a noose and Nev was freaking out. I miss him a lot. Honestly, there's no bad memories. It's just, they're all good memories. Walking into the back of New and seeing Nev in the back, just grinding away, working, and then chopping it up and kicking it with him for hours on end. He's always having to give him a ride, because he didn't drive. Talk about how he spent $8,000 on a chain, and then like three weeks later, one of the diamonds fell out of the chain. He was like, man, I can't shit, I'm stomach's all messed up. So I took him to go get his first colonic. And he couldn't believe it, but you know what? He felt a lot better afterwards. I went outside to smoke a joint, and I didn't think anybody else smoked weed. And Neva comes out, he's like, yo, can I smoke with you? And I'm like, damn, I didn't know you smoked weed. Post on the record one night, we did too many shots. We got Taco Bell, we went to your crib. You passed out with some Taco Bell in your hand. It was an amazing night. The bartender was just sending drinks after drinks after drinks. And at one point in the night, he's mixing. And we're just sitting there, and the beat is so off. He has no idea the beat's off. And then finally, he catches it and goes, he stops the music and goes, my bad, everybody, my bad. And we just all laughed it off. He's playing, falls asleep. I've never seen that ever in my life. Back in the jet days, falling asleep in the back of the nightclub. Everybody was there, Suge Knight. Like, you had a whole bunch of celebrities. I'm like, no, but he's like, what, what, what? I'm like, you fell asleep. He's like, what, what? Yo, yo, can you give me another drink? I'm like, <laughs> In 2014, when Bobby Schmurter came out with that record, Hot, he was the first DJ I ever heard play that record. Never was playing Snap Your Fingers, Little John and E-40. And then he uh, got out before the E-40 verse. So my first interaction with Never was, I was standing behind him, I tapped him on the show, yo, you didn't play the E-40 verse. And I got the classic first time ever, Never like that. Like, <laughs> we got to play Disco 45s for like two hours together. We geeked out. He was super excited to do something like that. He would come to see me spin in New York. And you could tell that he was just so engrossed in the art craft. And then I saw him shortly after that starting to DJ parties also. And I was very proud that I had possibly maybe like influenced him a little bit. Like he was coming to the clubs I was spinning at. And then I likewise came, started coming to Jet and the places he was doing in New York. And as somebody that was young at the time, really feeling unsure about what I was creating, having someone like Nev tell me, yo man, you're dope, I'll never forget that. I would always hear him say, we're just gonna warm up. And you hear it eight times a night, and it's like 1.50 in the morning, and like, dude, we still have another hour and a half. Finally, I figured out it wasn't about just getting warmed up. It's not about just hyping the crowd. It was, it was a state of mind. It was a mentality. Because that's where he was always at. He was always working towards helping people have that moment, that experience. It's not Thursday anymore. It's Friday. And I got a bag of 45. I think we should do one more 45 on a Friday.
everybody that came out. Now there's families over here. We, we just had a funeral service in New York, and I told them when they came here to Las Vegas, they were going to see the impact, the love, the community that, that came together for DJ Never. I'm just so grateful to have y'all here, and the love is in the building, and I, and I want to play this tribute video that we put together. Y'all cooking? Yeah. Let's go! The world is going crazy. People are forgetting how to act like human beings. It's getting harder for a brother. Everywhere I look, something upsets me. Thank God I got my urban beer butter. It's comforting to know there's a product out there that's made for that urban man. Smooth. That's urban beer, baby. Who told you to wear all black for Black Panther? He said all black. He said all black. Look at who said he, who said, said all black?
They're overwhelmed by everyone that came out here. They're overwhelmed by everyone who donated, yes. who commented, who reposted pictures, yes. videos, yes. and yes. memories of him. Yes. They, you yes. know, they, they only knew a taste of, of what never did here yes. in Vegas yes. Yes. on the West Coast. And it's like they're seeing it for the first time. And I just want y'all to know, thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Love you all. Thank